staying alive. To keep this story interesting, I'll share with you what I did to ensure my survival. When my brutal attack began, I fought to stay alive. As most do, I thought that maybe it was a foreign country behind it. After all, I worked on secret projects a decade earlier. I wrote the code to track the Soviet nuclear submarine fleet amongst many other government projects. Several times they said they would kill me through a remote-controlled heart attack if I didn't obey or tell them what they wanted to know. I lie on the ground and said I will die for my country to keep what secrets you want. You can imagine the betrayal I felt when I did some basic research. So, I wrote a clever computer virus. It was polymorphic and encrypted so that there was no string a viral scanner could easily identify and the code kept mutating. I put it on a server that would release it upon my death. The virus was not malicious, it merely directed every computer it infected to a web page that briefly told the plight of thousands in long-duration brutal culture mind control experimentation using EEG heterodyning. It would remove itself and leave the computer with an inoculant. The server that was to release the virus had to be pinged in a special way by my laptop within a two-week countdown. It is not illegal to write or study viruses, it is only illegal to release them. But if I were dead, why would I care? This threat might have kept me alive until this book was published. I have since deleted the virus. However, I have asked the publisher to put into my contract, that upon my untimely death, incarceration, or disappearance, the copyright of this book is revoked and the work becomes free to distribute to the public. For one who studied economics, they would know the consequences of the price-demand curve for free products. This book is surely an entertaining read whether you are capable of grasping the depravity of our government and the complexity of the truth or simply read it as a fictitious Orwellian-style prank. The Smoking Man In the TV series and movie The X-Files, there was a character that seemed to liaison between the conspirators and the FBI agents, Mulder and Scully. It was never revealed why he knew so much and eventually he dies of lung cancer. The Russians were very open about their research using psychocorrectional methods to try to help alcoholics and drug addicts. The research was very successful. The The United States studied just the reverse. They pinpointed the brainwaves of addictions and can amplify those pathways to cause self-destructive behaviors. Most people have heard that there is a high percentage of schizophrenics that smoke. The majority of assassination practice targets that smoke told me that they didn't smoke before the targeting began. In only one case did I find someone who they wanted to stop smoking as a form of control and they did. Creating alcoholics, smokers, and drug addicts are pull-down menu items of the Satan software. Killing the witnesses with an early death always helps when in 20 years the brutal crimes are revealed and there is no one alive to describe them in detail from a personal account once the mass news media is ready to interview. Edom and False Memory Implant Techniques Another CIA program that was released to the public many decades ago and is very much wrapped up into the current exaption of directed energy weapons testing on the United States citizens was called, Edom, Electronic Dissolution of Memories. It is a technique to accelerate memory decay of previously stored memories and to block short-term memory from becoming long-term memory. The theory is to supply many new stimuli to the memory pathways thereby, according to neural network theory, overload the network through excessive training samples and thereby decay the information contained in the network. Basically, it is overstimulation of the brain. The short-term memory block is a method like hypnosis to entrain the brain at a base frequency that it is not normally accustomed to operating at. Memories are stored at this new frequency rate which with hypnotic suggestion can be segmented and blocked from access under the normal brainwave patterns. This is why hypnosis can recover memories from children who were abused under the Mkudra mind control program. This phenomenon is also observed with psychoactive drugs and is called state-dependent memory. Implanting false memories is done by forcing a memory recall through verbal cues or forced recorded EEG patterns and then revising it with new imagery and associations. Once the false memory has been created, it needs to be reinforced through multiple recalls. Practice makes perfect. In my opinion this technique doesn't work very well on most people. I only encountered a small number who were severely programmed with false memory implants. Another method of memory erasure uses the grown virtual neurons. Memories are stored holographically and holistically in the brain synaptic weights not as engrams or single cell instances. If slash when the plug is pulled on the biocommunication signal, the virtual neurons that help store memories disappear too and information formed during the connection will be very significantly degraded. There will be more on this topic in the biocommunication chapter. Use of torture to harvest the best paranoid evil ideas. I do begin to have bloody thoughts. Shakespeare, The Tempest, 4. 
1. Another purpose of the extreme torture of people, is to examine the angriest thoughts a person can have and what that person can think of doing to the people and government behind it in their greatest moments of despair. It is a way of seeing what others with extreme hatred of the, the United States might come up with. My almost finished book on 101 ways to take over the world in 99 days might have been another reason I was chosen for this kind of mind probing. And finally, it is a way to test whether they have locked up and controlled all the information streams to reach the public. A victim of torture and assassination will quickly realize no one will believe the random acts of long duration brutality and that there is no one in the government that will help them. I have found other governments to be far more receptive in wanting to learn about the U.S.S. current state of the art mind control weapons that officially don't exist and the CIA interrogation and brainwashing techniques that are not used on random citizens therefore I could not be divulging any national secrets officially. You can see how dumb this whole thing is. If they are trying to keep secrets from their potential enemies, why is it that they demonstrate all their capabilities on people who then would seek asylum in another country? It is obvious that the only people they are keeping secrets from is the, the United States public. The Making of a Manchurian Candidate The Making of a Manchurian Candidate or CIA Programmed Assassin Isolation and Sensory Deprivation Complete Breakdown of Their Happiness Until They Reach Despair Removal of Personality, Ego, and Sense of Individuality Through Depatterning and Humiliation Fragmentation of Personality Through Torture Desensitization of Violence Through Imagery and Example Reprogramming fragmented personalities through hypnosis, psychic driving, and Skinnerian techniques to be triggered by words or induced electromagnetically. I caution you not to try this at home. But ironically now, all these steps are done in one's home using the various mind control scripts and biocommunication weapons system. The current program isn't all that different from the movie, Clockwork Orange, except they try to make the psychopathic killer rather than cure one. Reading Human Resonances Absorption Spectra Through Radar I have respected Carl Sagan, Cosmos, Stephen Hawking's, A Brief History of Time, and Green, An Elegant Universe, for their abilities to explain complex physics concepts in an understandable way to the general reader. I will never be able to reach their level of teaching but I would like to explain one technique of how brain waves can be read and influenced by electromagnetic energy. As it turns out there are many ways in which the seemingly science fiction feat can be done. I will explain a few of them based on patents from the 60s and 70s and then expand on some of those ideas. Let's start with the Malik patent. He never describes the underlying theory as to why his invention works, he just described how to build it and what applications it might be useful for. Imagine the brain being a complex mesh of switches. Initially, let us assume that they are all connected. We then have a structure that can be analogized to a wire mesh. When electromagnetic waves of the electrical resonance frequency of the wire mesh strike it, it absorbs the energy and begins to oscillate like an antenna on your car radio. This is how radar works by looking at what frequencies bounce back, scatter, get absorbed, or pass through an object. So like a swing that was pushed, it will oscillate back and forth in the electromagnetic spectrum rather than the potential energy spectrum. That oscillation eventually dampens and is converted to kinetic thermal energy. If we disconnect one of the wires in our mesh by throwing a relay, the resonance frequency changes abruptly. It would be like changing the length of the swing's ropes, or when an ice skater pulls in their arms while in a twirl to spin faster. So simply by observing the changes of oscillations of a swing set, we would know the length of the ropes holding it. Or simply by measuring the changes in our oscillating wire mesh, we would know how many switches were connected at any time. Now let us unravel the analogy back to brains. The brain resonates at roughly 450 to 800 megahertz in adults depending on many factors. Basic microwave communication hobbyists have known this for many decades. So if we look at the neuron and what gives rise to the electrical and magnetic fields in the brain, we see that the voltage sensitive sodium ion gates open and close during the depolarization process. The ion currents act like wired electrical currents and the gates act as switches turning on and off the currents. So the brain, like our wire mesh example above, will resonate according to the state of the ion gates. The phase, amplitude, and frequency of the changing resonance of the brain gives all the information about the brain's ion gates. The return radar signal tells where, when, and how many of these switches are closed and open. This is true with all objects and electrical appliances. Another way to view the problem of reading brain waves at a distance would be to look at the magnetic properties of electron flow. If you model the brain as a coil with inductance, Putting a magnetic field near it will change the resonance of the coil or induce a current in it. 
Ionic flows create magnetic fields which would change the brain's inductance properties. It is just two sides of the same coin. There is only one force in the universe with many expressions of it due to dimensional dilation that we observe as electric, magnetic, weak, strong, and gravity. Activity can be read through radar nor the heart beating through hole. body or organ resonance in a similar fashion. Other additional signal processing methods like Doppler radar adds another perspective. Even muscle contractions have similar ionic switches that can be measured. Disinformation agents, like Dr. Delgado, Colonel Bearden, and Colonel Alexander, would like you to believe their versions of science so you can join the ranks of the unenlightened but don't fall for it. The certain government agencies that like to keep secrets from the cattle they are testing their weapons on, will do or say anything to keep these secrets of basic physics. It isn't surprising that a major defense contractor in microwave antenna design rediscovered a mind-reading and influencing radar technique given that they are experts with antenna resonance designs. Now for the more unintuitive part. It has become common folklore in culture that brain waves cannot be read by satellites. The people who claim this and the other technology secrets have been exiled to the land of paranoids and the mentally ill. While satellites are used for the infrared imaging and visual imaging portions of the integrated global surveillance system, they are not the most probable source and antenna for reading of human biosignatures. The disinformation agents have been so successful with this campaign that the mere mention of the technology to government agencies will have you locked up in a psych ward for three days to add insult to injury for those experimented on. Let's look at the mathematics and physics behind this possibility though. Perhaps the uneducated and programmed within the policing function or justice system can understand some basic mathematics and physics and come to another conclusion. Just using back of the envelope calculations we can show the feasibility of these technologies being done by a constellation of satellites or a large phased array of terrestrial antenna. Fact number 1, squid transformers have a sensitivity of 10 to 15 teslas or 10 to 32 joules. They can measure the smallest detectable change in a second or equivalently the work required to raise a single electron one millimeter in the Earth's gravitational field. Fact number two, there are over 100 satellites available for remote sensing the terrestrial landscape in the sky at any time. Fact number three, we will use 1000 miles as the average Earth orbiting micro constellation of spy satellites average altitude. Satellites orbit between 600 miles to 28,000 miles above the Earth. Fact number four, the brain gives off a few femtoteslas of magnetic flux. The heart gives off 50,000 feet. A depolarizing neuron at its surface creates 70 millivolts and an average ionic current of underscore 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 amps. The brain's electrical activity at the surface of the scalp is in tens of microvolts. Fact number 5, a small dipole antenna, piece of metal, cut to operate at 402 MHz like the ones removed from many alien abductees radiates 2.5 mW from the head and 1.25 mW if implanted in the chest if that person is radiated with 1 watt of power. Biotelemetry and neural telemetry are well studied fields but science fiction to the general public. Cell phones deliver 5 watts to the head. And peak pulse power of alien signals I have been told deliver 30 watts to the human body but average power levels are still within SAR safe thresholds. First let's approach it from an implant perspective. Also assume we know the exact location of the target of interest. Since there are so many target tracking methods used in the military systems, this is a reasonable assumption. 2.5 x 10-3 watts will weaken by the square of the distance if radiated equally in all directions. So the needed sensitivity by a satellite would be 2.5 x 10-3 slash 1000 miles x 1.6129 x 103 meters slash mile 2, x 100 satellites, equals 9.61 x 10-14 watts or 9.61 x 10-14 joules per second. So that's within 15 orders of magnitude plausible. Or one could state that in the pentahertz wavelength, 1 x 10-15 seconds, enough energy could be detected. That extends all the way into the ultraviolet spectrum. That's an easy feat with just one squid transformer satellite. In fact just a constellation of large antennas would do the trick. But triangulation precision would be a must. With 100 satellites, you could precisely pinpoint and track that person and read the brainwaves or heartbeat with alien biotelemetric antenna implants. But I remind you, that ground-based mile-long phased arrays bounced off the ionosphere is the most likely source since superconductivity was not discovered until after the first government neurological torture testing began in the early 1960s. 
So how can so many people be monitored and tracked by such a system? If the source is correct, 25 million people can be tracked and controlled through the brain slash machine interface. If brain waves don't extend much beyond 2 kHz, then a time multiplexing scheme like what cellular phone transmitters use would work. 25 million asterisk 2 kHz equals 50 GHz for the upper bandwidth requirements. Currently published radar capabilities go into the terahertz frequency range or submillimeter wavelength well within the bandwidth required. In fact the entirety of human intelligence of the planet without compression operates at 1.34 terahertz, 6.7 billion people asterisk 2 kilohertz. In the last few decades implants have become less popular with the subhumans and aliens for their experimentation. In the X-Files, Scully, removed her alien implant and got cancer shortly afterwards. Was that a threat by the aliens to the implanted human slaves? The shadow government will kill you with plausible denial if you remove the implants, I think is the undertone. I am happy to report that I have seen and met with many victims of government torture and mind control experimentation that have removed their implants with only beneficial results. Makes you proud to be in the land of the free to know the stupidity and corruption still exists at higher levels today than when they were feeding radiation to people and dosing them with LSD randomly. So can bio and neural telemetry be done without an implanted dipole or microstrip antenna? RFID chips have shrunk to the size of a grain of rice. But, are they necessary at all? No, not according to full spectrum radar signature analysis or according to the Malik patent. Just the changes in the brain resonances due to ion channeling is easily detectable from a return signal from these radar and other surveillance method sources with many orders of magnitude sensitivity to spare. The math does not lie no matter how unintuitive it is. You can get a sense of the sensitivity of the technology just by observing the edges of the universe, 9 billion light years away, with pictures from the Hubble Space Telescope. You can get a hold of infrared imaging done during battle in Iraq on the internet. These images show the thermal heat of bodies causing photon emissions due to thermal instabilities with vibrating molecules. There is no radar energy pulse to light them up. It is not necessary in that part of the spectrum. You can clearly see the person's entire body lit up at great distances due to black body radiation. Now imagine that the body electricity caused the body to heat slightly in proportion to the voltage at the surface of the skin. This isn't true but the thought experiment will help you understand what the images would look like for the surveillance operators. You would very easily see the person flickering in the infrared spectrum and be able to demodulate the intensity of the flickering into brain waves, heartbeat, and muscle flexing. Well, this is what is happening in other parts of the spectrum that we don't usually see as an image. That is what can be seen by the giant eye reflected in the sky. That is what is meant by full spectrum imaging. It provides an incredibly clear view of all energy emissions from every point on the landscape when energy in every frequency is directed at it. The entire Earth is viewed this way. All life forms can easily be tracked. Using the signatures of all the waves lengths as well as body slash brain resonances and heartbeat rhythm, individuals can be tracked anywhere. Everyone has a unique body resonance signature, heartbeat signature, and brain wave print. No RFID chip or dipole antenna is needed anymore to do biotelemetry. Another point of reference to radar sensitivity can be seen with commercial weather satellite radar which can detect birds or even insects. It is so frustrating to see such ignorance amongst the psychology community, policing community, and FBI. It is difficult to get people up to speed in science and technology if they don't have an interest and are already biased or programmed with disinformation. Psychic warfare has been going on for four decades mostly practiced on the citizens. Using the psychology community to discredit victims of the practice kills and mind control programming, they have successfully been able to keep the truth of the technology under wraps and a taboo to even mention without the immediate conditioned response of that person is crazy who dares speak of cutting edge neural telemetry and psychophysics. If all these groups of people live long enough, they will see in 24 years the technology will be suddenly discovered or released by the Dodd. Maybe we were wrong about all those people pleading for help, might cross their minds. I wasted my career misdiagnosing all those people, might be another thought. I didn't serve justice or uphold the constitution. What a waste of life I was, perhaps might be thought by some others. Stupid alien tricks. This childish government assassin, I mean evil alien, would often say, quit hitting yourself. And then he would slap himself lightly which would make me slap myself lightly. Remember when you were a kid wrestling with someone stronger than you and they would grab your arm and make you hit yourself? Yes, the aliens enjoy that game too and doing it remotely. This capability probably inspired the movie, Fight Club. 
e.g. heterodyning is the ghost in the military machine. Just in case you are still wondering why we have terrorism at all or why we are called the Great Satan by many countries, just be reminded of articles published in major newspapers such as the February 14, 1992 USA Today, who reported allegations by Saddam Hussein that the CIA targeted him, the CIA used psychotronics and biocommunication to cause a blood clot in the brain or heart. We even have laws that say we cannot assassinate leaders of other countries. We have turned into a criminal state in which Congress is impotent to enforce the laws without an army of their own. Satan, silent assassination through amplified neurons, has many applications for pissing people off and creating lifelong enemies. Even the European Parliament documented this fact about the psychological effects of psychotronics after Desert Storm. Almost every country in the world is aware of the U.S.S. use of psychotronic weapons around the world except the United States citizens. Sadly, our government has decided to make us the most uneducated and politically ignorant nation of the so-called first world countries through an embarrassing public education system and perpetual lying to us due to national security. We have all sorts of laws that say the CIA and NSA can't spy on the United States citizens and human experimentation is banned, but who can enforce the laws if the executive branch is corrupt, illegal, and illegitimate? Classification of non-lethal directed energy weapons It is such a joke to call an ineffective killing weapon non-lethal. It is like classifying guns as non-lethal because the bullet doesn't kill the person. It is all the hemorrhaging that does. The bleeding is a secondary effect. E.g. cloning and non-lethal directed energy weapons do the same thing just over a much longer time frame and much more painfully. It is like trying to kill someone with a butter knife. It is more difficult, takes a lot longer, and will hurt a hell of a lot more. More system flaws with Tammy. In the world of psychic warfare, things are not black or white. Compatibility of minds, time spent locked on for adapting, a database brain match, and susceptibility of the target to the power levels of directed energy all are factors in the successfulness of a psychic attack. For example, Bilingual victims have all reported that if they start speaking another language, the psychic attackers can't understand what they are saying nor can the AI language recognition system correctly predict their sentences. This is only true for fairly fluent people who don't need to translate the meanings of words in their heads. Attacking the chain of command Let's ponder the power of EEG heterodyning as a weapon. In a hierarchy of command where people cannot question authority, how many people's minds would you have to influence to take control of the whole structure? 1. Everyone else's orders come from him slash her. This assumes that no one is bold enough to question the orders of course. So military command structures are extremely vulnerable to a takeover. There are few safeguards to watch them or question them especially if the secrecy directive is used. How many people need to be controlled or influenced to take over Congress? How about the judicial branch? Not many, and the whole country would then follow suit. The masses might get suspicious if things seem too unusual and not in line with the Constitution. So you might need to take over the media. How many mass news information streams are there? So the Russians were right. If you could control less than 10,000 people maybe even fewer than 2,000 people, you could steer the direction of the whole country. Is it smart to keep this technology a secret from the population so that they can't recognize the symptoms of a takeover? Is it smart to not build zero-emission superconducting shelters in case of an attack on the public? Who is defending us? Why the F do we have a military and security agencies who can't do their jobs? Is it incompetence, or treason? Other limitations of Tammy When I was brain-napped, I was told that I had to slow down my thinking, speak in complete sentences, and think aloud in words. Apparently my brain was of interest because when they EEG cloned my mind onto theirs, they could only pick up vision, sound, and the senses but not my higher level thoughts. They were interested in mapping my brain waves more completely to add to their database. Having a fast mind means that there is not time for the amplification of the brain entrainments to be induced in the psychic spy. This is also somewhat true with vision. If one scans the surroundings quickly, the cloner sees a blurring of images. Humor break a riddle. So what's a book about the darkest times in human and American history without some riddles to solve? In the spirit of Batman, where the Riddler tries to mind control the world, I riddle you this, when I began being mind probed and interrogated, I asked for help from every federal government agency. I was concerned that just maybe the Russians were actually behind it given my background and would extract the secrets that I hold. I got no response from hundreds of letters including from the Navy which I hold the most secrets. So I am their destroyer. 
who am I? Why, The Matrix? Why was the movie, The Matrix called that? Is it a reference to the global grid to which several kernels I worked with for DARPA projects refer? Isn't the global grid just the internet of networked information? I believe it is a reference to the image matrix calculated with MRI slash ESR techniques. Like I mentioned before, I found a Yale professor who has been doing earth cause intensity MRIs since the late 60s. Generally high powered superconducting magnets are used in hospital MRIs. This is because they need high resolution and fast imaging techniques. Under a weak magnetic field the same principles apply but the time to acquire an image is greater and the resolution is far less. But you could map out the entire earth this way especially if you combine it with radar techniques. Perhaps it is a reference to the matrix algebra that is used for hyper-fast complex algorithms such as calculating a cognitive model of the human brain. Perhaps the movie, The Matrix was named from interferometry techniques. If you intersect three perpendicular coherent, linearly polarized electromagnetic sources, you create a matrix of constructive and destructive interference patterns. Altering the frequencies would cause the matrix to roll or scan. A multi-frequency radar imaging that tries to balance the return signal from all directions of a target by increasing the strength of the signals accordingly would create scalar waves or an invisible electromagnetic interferometric matrix all around the target. Directed energy. There is a medical instrument called the gamma knife used to focus X-rays from all angles around the head to burn tumors in the brain without cutting open the skull. At the intersection of these gamma rays, the energy is intense enough to kill the tumor cells while harmlessly passing through the other brain matter. Only at the intersection is the combined energy deadly. GPS, Global Positioning System, works on the same principle except one calculates position from the timing of the satellite pulses which arrive at slightly different times. 2MW 100 satellites asterisk, a beam width of 1 slash 100 of 360 degrees, equals 454 MW of pulse peak power over a large area. Shrink the beam width to 1 slash 1000 of 360 degrees, equals 45 watts of power over that area. This is more than plenty to affect neurons. The Russian Radio Electronics Institutes published back in the 70s that with only 10 watts up to 100 MW slash CM2 of microwave energy, they observed all kinds of different effects on the firing groups of neurons. Again this back of the envelope calculation says it is quite possible to have satellite based neurological weapons. At first blush it sounded like Star Wars science fiction, didn't it? However, this was just an exercise. Satellites are better sensors than powerful emitters. It would make more sense to use giant radar fields known as ionospheric heaters to bounce their phase 10 gigawatt energy fields off the atmosphere back to spots on Earth. Similarly, one could use extremely high-powered directed energy weapons from satellites to converge their energy onto one point using phased array beam steering or high-powered masers. Ignoring the obvious assassination application, it can be used to increase the resolution of MRI-ESR and other imaging techniques. At the intersection, the phase-frequency-amplitude is calculated such that the full energy for a duration of time is maximized in the magnetic field by modulating a very low sideband and destructively heterodyning the beam's high-frequency carriers. During that increased magnetic field another radio or higher frequency signal can be used for the excitation of the electron spins or magnetic nuclei for the relaxation photons to be collected and viewed. This would be better than just using the natural Earth's magnetic field for increased resolution. Seems like another science fiction feat doesn't it? But just look at the infrared image resolution of the Air Force's AC-130S 5 miles from their targets. This energy is emitted by thermally generated collisions of vibrating molecules without any external energy to excite it. If every valence electron or nucleus could be prodded to give off a photon in a similar fashion the landscape and people would be easily reconstructable into a three-dimensional image, that is Earth penetrating tomography, an application of the ionospheric heaters. Here is another brain teaser for you. Suppose you have two laser beams with perfect monochromatic, one frequency, and coherent, in phase, wave fronts. The beams each enter a cube made of two right angle prisms. The cube acts to combine the beams and project it onto a screen. One laser is moved one half wavelength further from the cube than the other. If one laser is operational you will see a spot on the screen. But if they are both operational you will not. Why? Where does the energy go? Why is this relevant? It demonstrates how to make pinpoint high energy waves anywhere on earth via directed energy weapons with constructive interference of energy sources. All sorts of interesting effects can be done with these sorts of weapons. 
from being able to induce electronic machines to behave a certain way for example or to destroy their circuitry with high-powered M or microwave pulses. Destructive interference mode beams like in the laser example above create scalar waves that can travel tremendous distances with high intensity fields without burning the object of interest and reflect back with tremendous signal to noise ratio. More on this technique later. Hypergeeking, the concepts behind the most top secret global human surveillance and manipulation systems. Synthetic aperture radar and beam steering. All these concepts of directed energy are just rebranding marketing jargon for half a century old concept except with more power. Grids of transducers or antenna can shape the wave front by phase controlling the individual elements in the grid. The beam can be shaped wider by using lower frequencies or narrower by using high frequencies. It can be steered 360 degrees and its intensity whether in constructive or destructive modes can be controlled. The carrier signals in the beams can be modulated and shaped with ELF waves or heterodyned into high frequency side lobes. That is it behind the concepts of scalar scatter radar and directed energy systems. Time reverse echo. Time reverse echo is a technique which can be used to send a signal back to the source even if the location of the source is undetermined due to multiple reflections. By using a phased array of microphones or antenna, the signal is collected and rebroadcast in the reverse time sequence the signal arrived. The phased array signal will bounce off all the same structures to combine and arrive at the source at the same time. If you amplify the return signal, you could potentially attack a signal source this way once it is identified from a signature. This technique was written about in Scientific America and the principle would probably work in any medium. One could envision arrays of transducers on the ocean floor that could send out jamming sonar or high-powered directed sonic waves that would deafen occupants in submarines listening to ocean sounds, shake the hull of the water vessel, create cavitations in the turbines to stall it, or act like a lithotriptor and from a calculated energy propagation or resonance pattern of direct mechanical energy to locations within the water vehicle to cause structural or mechanical failure. I have never heard of any research in this area of directed pressure waves as a weapon, but maybe that's what has been causing so many whales to beach themselves. Neuron Induction and Brainwave Modulation Techniques Scalar ELF Brain Modulation Using Magnetic Field Induction or Electric Field Modulation Roche video for CNN. Bird. Resonances standing microwaves using FDTD modeling of humans. Using Malik and Stockland's brain resonance frequency modulators. Nanoparticles and designer biochemistry. Neuronal amplification technology. It was discovered back in 1920s that neurons could be influenced by electromagnetic induction. This technology has been held in the strictest top secret clearance government labs since then as it was developed. Only now are universities exploring it as a tool for curing depression and quelling the voices of schizophrenics, Yale, and University of Pennsylvania. The population was being prepped for the human efficacy trials even as far back as the 1960s. The television series, The Outer Limits, features mind control, synthetic telepathy, and evil alien experimentation in almost every episode. It is simply easier for people to cope with the idea of evil aliens than high treason and being betrayed by the government of a country that they are ready to die for to uphold the ideals of the doctrines. The mass programming through popular media has continued to this day to seed the ideas that these high technology experiments of mind are conducted on behalf of a secret evil alien plot. I have tried my best to avoid scientific details of these technologies that are often ungraspable by the general public. But at this time we must use the magnifying glass to examine the details to garner clues to solve the world's biggest mystery. In this case, we need to scrutinize the psychophysics term of choice. Choice occurs at the moment of neuron depolarization. It is the summation of synaptic potentials at the hillock which determines whether a depolarization is warranted. There are a plethora of biological mechanisms which can be affected by electromagnetic forces that would alter this moment of choice. Affecting the neurotransmitter release, voltage potential across the membrane, the voltage sensitive organelles on the cell membrane responsible for conductance, or any ionic current flow in the biochemical mechanisms would achieve the desired neural influence. Remember that biochemical sensitizers can increase the electromagnetic influence in these mechanisms. The key to influencing a neuron and the entire informational structure of the mind is in the timing of the pulses of electromagnetic signals. Using just EEG probes is generally not enough to determine the timing. One needs to precisely time each neuron's interaction with the next throughout the whole structure at the moment of choices. This is why electromagnetic energy doesn't send everyone into seizures. It is only in the informational coherence of the signal specific to each individual that matters. Everyone has different axon lengths and hence timings of potential amplification of external electromagnetic influence. 
This is the reason that the ever-growing database of TAMI must be maintained for maximal effectiveness on the world's population. The synapse of a neuron has been analogized to Medusa's head. It looks like a bunch of snakes extruding from the body of the neuron. Be careful not to stare directly at the science or you will be turned to stone, menticized like a zombie. Neurotransmitter release with specific frequencies and power levels. So, for argument's sake let's say that the Air Force documents that I published in the appendix of this book are true and not meant to look like an accidental misclassification of a top secret weapon, and the Russian literature from their radio and electronic institutes are true too. Then neurotransmitter release occurs at specific power absorption and under certain frequencies. E.g. heterodyning which causes neuron amplification could be done in this way. Why are certain people chosen around the world for these endless tortures and extermination? Directed energy might work like the Stanford Gamma Knife. Only at the intersection of several power pulses does the neurotransmitter release occur. Perhaps certain individuals exceed an allowable sensitivity that is used for communicating with spies and need to be terminated for that reason. Perhaps everyone is monitored by a specific program and those that get classified as psychics become too sensitive and start picking up other people's monitoring signals or programs and need to be terminated or psychotronically imprisoned for that reason. It is only speculation what the rationale the traitors use to justify why they do this, but the illusion of freedom is crumbling. No illusion is 100% containable. Perhaps we are chosen on the human surveillance global grid as one of the thousand points of light to be human property of the Dodd. If Congress were to order another independent investigation as has been done several times in the past, documents would be shredded and the cowards scrambling to the shadows. All the countries in the world need to stand up and say enough is enough. We will not allow you to pick us off one by one like cattle with your mind control weapons, manipulate our politics, and instigate wars, just so the machine can justify growth like a cancer over the planet. Many will have trouble accepting this basic research. But it does not detract from the truth of it. The educated will at least see the plausibility of it and if they have time investigate it further. In a nutshell, direct the energy for the correct power level, time the pulses to the individual's cognitive model for synaptic transmission in the state-dependent time sequence. Why is this concept so difficult for academics to understand and catch up with the aliens in their research? Brain reading satellites and ionospheric heater radar fields. To give you an idea of power density and sensitivity of instruments, Let's consider an FM radio station 20 miles away emitting 50 kilowatts of power. The receiver would only measure 2.1 x 10 to 5 W slash M2. That's what your car radio receives, demodulates, and amplifies for your listening pleasure. A 1 terahertz submillimeter wavelength radio antenna such as the 10 meter Heinrich Hertz telescope can view a typical radio source intensity of 10 to 26 W slash M2 through the Earth's atmosphere. Do you still believe that radar brain resonances can not be read by satellite radio telescopes? How the electromagnetic sensing systems work together. Any ground-based network like HARP, GWEN, cell phone towers or the Russian woodpeckers could also perform this feat of mind reading and control but not on a global scale. Only through the hundreds of spy and remote sensing satellites circling the Earth and the tens of giant ionospheric phased array fields could you cover the entire globe with directed energy weapons and the subset class of mind control weapons. Imagine a steerable beam using a phased array of transmitters. This is similar to a mechanical method of using a mirror to deflect a laser beam like for laser light shows except it requires no moving parts. The intensity of the beam and all other participating satellite beams can converge on one spot or many spots simultaneously. This would be directed energy whose intensity is supposed to be enough to fry the electronics in anything not radiation hard shielded. It might heat a human being but I don't believe the effects can be made immediately lethal by the thermal effects alone otherwise Saddam Hussein would not have complained about the biocommunication directed energy weapon torturing him in 92. He would have been fried like the rest of us. The torture just pisses people off if they can't kill you through menticide. Notice how we had to fight another war after we used it on him. The European Parliament commented on the non-lethal and mind control weapons in general and stated they need to be banned because they only instigate wars and increase violence. Though the United States refuses to sign any treaties or acknowledge them to their own citizens. Welcome to the land of freedom, where you are free to believe all the lies your government tells you. The grid of satellites in the hemisphere or the ionospherically reflected ground-based miles-wide antenna fields can be used in a time-sliced manner or calculate an inverse Fourier transform to attack many people at the same time without exposing too many others to the same intensity and frequencies. All the sensor systems are integrated to act as one single antenna or phased array. 
This allows the link system to redirect energy from almost any angle to find a weakness in a shielded structure. Remember in the Malik patent it said that frequencies between 10 MHz and 40 GHz could be used for mind reading radar. That's a huge range and may extend even higher in the spectrum. Different frequencies have different ability to penetrate different materials and structures. Full spectrum radar sends a broadband ping across all frequencies like a flash of white light from a camera, and records all the returns across the area. Each person has a unique set of frequencies that they will absorb or return to the sensor arrays. This uniquely identifies everyone. Based on autocorrelation techniques, one can determine the optimal route and frequencies to be emitted by the phased arrays of antenna to optimally modulate the brain waves of the target. By finding the weaknesses of shielding or barriers by using any frequency or path, there would be few defenses against a nervous system disruptor that targets individuals. When Dan Rather was beaten up by directed energy weapon torture victims, they kept asking what is the frequency Kenneth? Everyone looks for the frequencies that the illegitimate CIA and DOT elements are using to torture them but it is nearly impossible to isolate them with a budget under a million dollars. Especially if they can use narrowband or broadband in such a large spectrum. The patent claims you can use pulsed or continuous wave. It would be easy to devise a frequency hopping scheme so that the pattern would not stand out or use deterministic broadband noise to diabolically hide the informational coherence. On top that, who would recognize brain waves modulated into a frequency hopping scheme? We are bathed in electromagnetic energy and I have yet to see a successfully built full spectrum anechoic M chamber. Diagram of satellite energy hitting many points on the US. Diagram of penetrating shielding. What other advantages do scalar waves have? They can penetrate materials to a greater degree since the electromagnetic energy doesn't get absorbed by the surfaces. Remember that electromagnetic waves reflect, scatter, get absorbed, or transmit through any material with these different parameters. A perfect scalar wave will no absorption in the material so more will get through allow one to penetrate to greater depths with high energy radar. Some refer to this as ground penetrating radar. Diagram of frequency hopping brainwave encoded pulses. Why is it difficult to detect scalar waves? They exist as pure field potential, some call this a gravity wave. Separating the sources of the interference requires a radio telescope with enough resolving power. There are other techniques that disinformers and Tesla junkies call free energy machines that try to extract the scalar wave energy in which the global surveillance system baths our planet. The extra energy the humans absorb is only supposed to increase the risk of cancer by 5%. You do the math of how many people the aliens are killing each year while watching and protecting us. Here is a diagram of what a scalar wave looks like. Diagram of a person within a destructive interference fringe of electromagnetic energy. So the question that it raises is, do the energy sensors still pick up an object in an interference fringe? With just one source alone they would. People might believe that you could penetrate solid objects this way if it didn't interact with the object. If the scalar field can penetrate the shielding this would be a large distance quantum tunneling effect. This is an outstanding question for the scientific community for civilian defenses. This is the basis of the top secret scalar weapons that have so many disinformation agents confusing people in the scientific community and are the basis for menticizing and silently assassinating people without easily being detected. So I will leave the answer for you to discover it on your own. Get a laser and create a Michelson interferometer whose beams completely interferes with each other destructively. Place a photodiode in the path or a piece of film and see what happens. Now place a piece of thin black film at the perfectly destructive interference path and measure the intensity at different points behind it. That will answer whether the photons can penetrate a shield while the waves seem to be non-existence because of averaging. Stealthy isn't is. This is the paradox between waves and photons that baffle our intuitive senses. Interfacing Tammy. Tammy's interface has three screens for the operator. The interface uses an eye tracker instead of a mouse, keyboard, or touch screen. Tammy's operator needs only look at one spot on the screen for a second, then a drop-down X Windows driven menu system allows the operator to traverse the options merely by looking at them. It turns out to be a very efficient way to operate the program. The developers experimented with voice recognition but this turned out to have some issues with coveredness. The eye tracking system is also necessary in light of the fact that an EEG clone target would catch on more quickly what was happening to them if they were tapping their fingers all the time. Instead the extra eye movement has already been covered up by the strategic disinformation agents in the psychology community. I found a paper that said people who are schizophrenic have a very unusual extra rapid eye movement. Nicely done agents. 
the left screen shows the operator's brain frequency energy spectrum next to the targets and underneath is the combined. The center screen is used to select the tortures and other brain modulation scenarios. The third screen is workspace and used for the psychic training games I described earlier or the truth detector brain printing analyzer program. Show screenshots from front cover. Creating powerful and directed ELF, extremely low frequency, magnetic and electric fields using single side band, heterodyned UHF beams. Diagram of UHF waves arriving at a point and creating a longer waveform using exponential wave amplitude fronts. Stupid alien tricks. We covered a lot of science, but we had to get through it so that the doubt is removed that this weapon system exists, so we can move on to the more important implications of it on society. Let's take a break for a moment and watch the fools entertain us. We're going to crush your head and punch you in the stomach, the agents say. I feel a pressure on my head and a nauseating wrenching in my gut. They tell me that their head hurts because they squeeze too hard. Where can you find so many dumb aliens that would hurt themselves to hurt others? I'll give you one guess where mindless obedience comes from. Scalar weapons, creating high-intensity elf magnetic and electric fields through heterodyning high-frequency directed energy weapons. This is a trick that seems quite astounding when you see it. That is the ability to direct enough energy at an extremely low frequency to spin a compass needle or create a voltage gradient seemly out of thin air. We intuitively think that there needs to be a near-field physical object present to create the kind of magnetic or electric field strength to accomplish this but with the giant ionospheric heaters phased array fields this feat can be done. Puerto Rico's and Brazil's are very much within range and operational within the time frame that most ships and planes were lost in the Bermuda Triangle. During the past century more than 50 ships and 20 aircraft sailed into oblivion in the area known as the Devil's Triangle, Bermuda Triangle, and Hudusi. The satanic cults or naval weapons testers have been operating for a long time conducting warfare exercises on their own ships and civilian crafts. Here is how I believe the scalar directed energy weapons can spin a compass needle. During the heaviest attacks by the ghosts, I say sarcastically, they actually spun several compasses needles 360 degrees. They quit demonstrating this trick once I set up Hall Effect high sensitivity magnetic sensors around my house to record the fields 24 hours of day. I have video of a compass needle oscillating 45 degrees from true magnetic north at roughly 0.3 Hz for 10 minutes. Let's simplify the model to get a better grasp of it. If you created two beams from two beam steered phased array fields which bounce their very intense UHF beams off the ionosphere to intersect at an area the size of a small neighborhood block, you would have roughly 10 gigawatts of energy to work with. You can only create tight beams with high frequencies. Raw low frequencies emitters create very wide beams. This is true for sound waves as well. But you can create a mixed or heterodyned intersection point that has very low frequencies if the high frequencies are exactly cancelled out. This is how directional ultrasonic heterodyning sound projection is done to project a voice into one person's head with sound waves without the person next to them hearing it. So one high-powered UHF beam contains the very low frequency information and the other just contains the same UHF carrier without the low frequency component but it is 180 degrees out of phase at the intersection point. What is left is an extremely low frequency, high intensity, magnetic and electric field that seems to come out of thin air and be directionless, that is a scalar field. But in fact is does have direction it just can't easily be measured. If airplanes still used compasses rather than laser gyroscopes to fly, they could be disoriented and made to crash this way or ships to go off course. But the Bermuda Triangle seems to have quit taking lives once GPS and gyroscopic navigation instrument have been the common instrumentation method. Of course, GPS signals could be fooled by these kind of signal attacks too. Gyroscopes are immune to these directed energy attacks. As a good college level physics problem, I will leave the math up to the reader. What is the power required to counter the Earth's natural magnetic field of 0.5 gauss over a neighborhood block? Determine the low frequency power component of a high intensity UHF signal modulated with it. You will find that it falls well within the upper bounds of the so called ionospheric heater phased array high power directed energy fields. For more advanced students, write your own Maxwell equation solver. You might want to use the numerical approximation method of finite differential time domain, FDTD, to do it. Run the simulations as described above to simulate scalar interferometry and convince yourself that it can be done at these power levels. Let's say that Colonel Thomas Bearden's gravity wave free energy device that collected 75 watts of power was 100% efficient and used a 1 square foot gravity wave collection dish which is about the area of the head and body viewed from above. 
that means the average scalar scatter radar energy passing through a person is roughly 70 milliwatts per centimeter squared. That is exactly the range the Russian university papers describe altering neuronal group firings coincidentally. And for the professional physicist, estimate of how many coulombs of gyro-synchronized electrons are needed per unit area under 70 milliwatts per centimeter squared intensity radar beam to read the bioelectric field given a known noise background and an antenna field the size of harp. Next how many electrons need to be jostled to disable the surveillance technique and at what rate? You can see why plasma research is so popular at NASA and DARPA. This is very good evidence that while satellites could perform the same trick, they would have difficulty generating that kind of power continuously from solar panels. This is extremely good news for the thousands that are tortured by these systems each year. See the section on anti-psychotronic theory for more details. That means the killing signals have an exact direction that can be calculated by ray tracing your location to the ionosphere back to the 4 or 5 directed energy antenna fields aka over the horizon radar. Those are the directions you want to block to weaken the nervous system disruptor or the surveillance system's secondary effects for electrically sensitive individuals. Hiding the scalar killing signals that is low probability of interception radar. Not only do the scalar waves look like they are coming out of nowhere, the carrier frequency can be what is called deterministic broadband noise. Deterministic broadband noise is a signal that appears just like noise across some bandwidth of a broad spectrum let's say HF UHF for example. It is calculated from a uniform random distribution function. It is really just a deterministic, very complex function that looks just like true random noise. It will appear like regular noise to an amateur signal analyst looking at an oscilloscope or spectrum analyzer. The background noise levels will be just a bit higher and most amateur radio engineers do not keep measurements on the absolute background noise levels. This very complex broadband carrier wave will be cancelled out at the point of intersection of a scalar wave anyway. So this is how you can hide the carrier wave of the signal in noise and hide the direction and carrier wave frequencies of the signal with heterodyning destructive interference, that is scalar waves. The reverse is true too. You can create a high frequency coherent signal at the intersection of directed energy wave fronts that would increase the bandwidth by the addition of the frequency sources. This too could be a combination of several deterministic broadband noise signal carriers. If one signal was intercepted, it would appear like noise. Only at the intersection of the many signal sources can the message be deciphered and will be automatically decoded through nature's signal addition arriving at the correct time, phase, and amplitude. So the upper bounds of the bandwidth of the psychotronic attack signals would be the maximum frequency that can be bounced off the ionosphere at the angle from the three or four radar fields added together. Scalar Interferometric Stealth Radar aka Scatter Radar How does stealthy scatter radar work in terms of low probability of interception? You must remember two facts to understand scalar scatter radar. Photons reflect off of surfaces at 90 degree angles and they do not convert to other photon types during flight, except off course Doppler shifting due to relativistic effects of space dilation or contraction and reflecting off moving objects. Beaming two coherent, monochromatic photon streams at an object 180 degrees out of phase with very little difference in intensity will render the measurable energy at the intersecting path nearly zero in terms of its combined electromagnetic field but the photons still exist and continue their flight path and reflection points which can be read accordingly through phase angle filtering or where the beams no longer intersect at a distance. This technique is especially useful if a tracking lock has occurred and the target's location is already known. Using time of flight filtering and Doppler shifting to update location adds to the precision of all low probability of detection radar imaging techniques. In the reverse mode of constructive interference, all the intersecting beams would add their intensity together and maximum energy transference to objects would occur. How does this relate to mind reading radar? The Russians first used scatter radar on the, the United States Embassy in Moscow. The microwaves used to collect the brain resonance changes and electron spin resonances were scalars from phased arrays. The microwave energy was still detectable and far from a perfect scalar. But the measurable microwave energy could have been the influence signal necessary to affect brain wave modulation. Putting deflecting screens on the building actually increased the energy readings. This is because if you block one path of two intersecting beams, the full energy of one of the beams will be measured as well as confine the scalar energy that penetrated the walls then separated into their individual paths. Once the beam paths separate out of a scalar, the energy has more difficulty escaping back through the walls and windows, now with screens on them. Synthetic telepathy and microwave hearing effect There is actually a subtle difference between these two communication modes called synthetic telepathy and microwave hearing effect. 
the microwave hearing effect is thought to heat the brain slightly and cause a pressure wave to the inner ear according to Dr. Lin for the University of Illinois. Other microwave hearing devices claim that they stimulate the auditory nerves and a third claims it stimulates the brain cells in the auditory cortex using microwaves. This is the crossover point to synthetic telepathy. The microwave hearing effect is often used during the brain mapping processes. Words are stimulated to be heard, and the automated mapping software records the whole brain patterns that are triggered by that word. So meanings of words are now mapped to the sounds. Synthetic telepathy uses both the direct stimulation of the audio cortex and word association brain areas for brain-to-brain -brain communication. It is a far more accurate and efficient way to convey ideas and thoughts without misinterpretations. The pulsed microwave audiograms are heard as sound but usually needs background noise to be heard giving the illusion that the source of the background sound is the source of the pulsed audiogram transmission. During my time as an unpaid quality assurance engineer for EEG heterodyning experimentation, I was able to achieve pure thought communication based on word meaning without internal voice or microwave hearing transmissions. It is creepy to be that close to someone else's mind. While speaking a different language throws off the other hive mind participants and the sentence completion software, it doesn't entirely prevent thought reading because words are mapped to concepts and meanings and those are conveyed if a good mind mapping has been achieved. See the promised land for the universal translator concept. Plus 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 http slash slash www.the.cc slash contents slash more slash archive slash sound underscore as underscore weapon dot html. Communicating via the microwave auditory effect is the title of a small business contract for the Department of Defense. Communication initial results are, the feasibility of the concept has been established using both low and high power systems. A Freedom of Information Act, FOIA, request as to the project's outcome met with denial on the part of the Air Force, on the grounds that disclosure could reasonably be expected to cause damage to national security. Though the Air Force denied this FOIA disclosure, such a contract's purpose is elaborated by the Air Force's New World Vistas report, it would also appear possible to create high-fidelity speech in the human body, raising the possibility of covert suggestion and psychological direction. If a pulse stream is used, it should be possible to create an internal acoustic field in the 5 to 15 kHz range, which is audible. Thus it may be possible to talk to selected adversaries in a fashion that would be most disturbing to them. Robert O. Becker, whose eminence was enough to have been twice nominated for the Nobel Prize in Biological Electromagnetic Fields Research, is explicit regarding clandestine use, such a device has obvious applications in covert operations designed to drive a target crazy with voices or deliver undetectable instructions to a programmed assassin. A microwave voice transmission non-lethal weapon is referenced in the thesaurus of the Center for Army Lessons Learned, which is a military instruction website, Vidi Infra for discussion of the analogously listed silent sound device. 19. An article from a magazine that publishes notably non-mainstream views details microwave inner voice device demonstration by Dr. Dave Morgan at a 1993 classified Johns Hopkins-sponsored non-lethal weapon conference, manufactured by Lockheed Sanders, and used by the CIA who call the process voice synthesis or synthetic telepathy. Electromagnetic signatures of spoken words applied to the head at very low field levels, one microtour, affect word choice significantly along the emotional dimensions of the applied word. Though inspired by microwave hearing, this report is not of direct hearing. The author suggests that such an influence, even though weak, could shift the direction of group decisions in large populations, and has previously elaborated on the possibility of a less specific electromagnetic influence on populations. Plus 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 plus. Psychic spying through animals. The Navy has since the 40s or earlier tried to train dolphins as suicide bombers. Dolphins swim silently. Strapping a bomb to them and getting them to approach an enemy submarine or boat was the goal. They now have complete remote control of sharks to do this trick. However, one civilian researcher in EEG cloning amplified someone else's brain waves using magnetic coils to inject it into his brain. He could see a flashlight bright spot in his vision where the cloned subject was looking into a bright spotlight moving around. He felt really agitated during this experiment. He said he wouldn't try it again. He started doing research with EEG heterodyning with dolphins. That is all I could track as to his progress. Now interestingly, Neuroscience magazine reported that with electrodes implanted in a cat's brain they could decipher the visual cortex and display the cat's vision on a computer screen. It seems like a logical inference that you could then use animals' visual cortex to do spying too. What would it be like to try and map other species' minds onto a human, I wonder?
maybe we would all become vegetarians if we tried it and we could feel what other species feel. If not, we can still apply a consciousness metric to every species including fetuses. We can then make an informed decision about the line we draw and what we can kill without remorse. The death doctors as they are called, performed an experiment using an implanted cyber link from a child to an ape. The experiment was to see if the ape would recognize the little child's mind and be calm when the child was put into the cage. The experiment failed and the child was killed immediately. Clearly, the Dodd funded death doctors were very interested in controlling animals and viewing through their mind or eyes with this line of research. Star Wars and Spa War The division within the government that strategizes about space conflict is called Spa War, shortened from Space Wars. What many call science fiction, I know to be current science fact. It took the top DARPA scientists almost five years to figure out what the Russians were doing to the, the United States Embassy in Moscow. Clearly the best scientists do not work for the Department of Defense. Earlier I described the disinformation campaign on destructive interference fringes called scalar waves by the weapons marketing division. Keep this in mind. Let's perform some thought experiments in the tradition of Einstein. So here is the problem rephrased. If two wave fronts destructively interfere at the point of measurement, how can you separate the photons such that you can determine whether a destructive fringe is being measured from two interfering waveforms? With normal measuring equipment, it would read zero in both the electric and magnetic fields. A pinhole camera would block all but one path of the rays and reveal a single source of energy. A convex mirror would also separate the signal and amplify the very, very small angle of incidence. These are scalar detectors or scatter radar detectors. I leave the specifics of engineering one up to the reader. The other way to look at the problem is to view the sources from a radio telescope to get the resolution necessary to separate the very separate sources of the energy and pinpoint them. It would take a very large dish to do this. This makes you wonder if this is why we invest so much as a country into looking at the stars. Using pinhole photography techniques to resolve scalar energy, can be difficult. The problem is that the frequency can be changed and hence the alignment of the holes would change. But that is the basic idea of how to turn an interference fringe, scalar gravity wave, into free energy. All this technology can be discovered by researching Russian translated documents but so many of the ideas get lost in the verbatim translation. You need to understand the errors of translation between languages to get the nuances of the ideas. All the lies and propaganda, makes one wonder if that perhaps through psychological warfare, that is propaganda, we have been persuaded to fight for the dark side of the force in the delusion that we are fighting for democracy and freedom. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I know that I am probably going into too much detail about the CIA mind control experiments, but one that I found particularly interesting is that they can determine what images and forms you find attractive. They can show you a sequence of people and determine through some brainwave response who you found attractive. This could be useful if they were to use an agent to try and extract information or gain confidence through intimacy. On a funny note, I was told that one characteristic that CIA field agents usual have is below average looks. The psychological advantage is that most people don't remember or stare at average or below average looking people and hence it makes them more covered in their missions. The truth isn't nearly quite as glamorous as James Bond or Mission Impossible. One of the more advanced microwave hearing effect tricks. Phase angle segmentation of voice throwing. Imagine a bunch of soldiers surrounding a speaker listening to static, barely able to pick up their orders which are cutting in and out, garbled intentionally by the electronic warfare jammers. Every listener will have a different angle relative to the speaker. It is possible to make every person hear different commands coming through the speaker. Several psychic soldiers could get them to argue over what was heard or get them all to do the wrong things in a disorganized fashion. How is this done? I was demonstrated this technique for an entire day and had many different theories how it was done at the time but I am certain that the ventriloquism and bar trick is done this way. So an amusing spy game that was played with me, as a nice distraction from the torture, was an encoded message, one like I have never seen. I studied how to crack day and other encryption technologies but had no real experience in the hacking techniques of the human mind before my ordeal. In secret government laboratories, the encryption keys are changed as frequently as can be cracked by the best decryption machines they have. The human brain cannot change its encryption, so once decoded your brain is forever part of the TAMI database and network. The mind has no firewall. Using any noise source, specific frequencies from that source can be amplified perceptually. So, 
encoding a voice pattern into a noise source is simply a matter of timing of the neuronal pathways that amplify the perception of the projected voice frequencies. In my research into FBI cases and interviews with government test subjects, it is obvious that any noise source can be used and in some cases not even necessary depending on the individual's brain amplification. I have read testimony that describes how refrigerators or even Rice Krispies would talk to test subjects. In my demonstration, I had a rainmaker slash white noise generator running. It had a single speaker. The message was complex, patterned, and repetitive. I heard a sequence of four words which rotated through ten other sets after each phrase was uttered in a poetic style. The phrases were, talk to your governor. I'll bring you coffee. I am the secretary. Now, raise a caucus. Dukakis went to Harvard. Join their cosmology department. This game got boring to me since I was not a spy and turned off by the cloak and dagger bullshit. I would walk away. At about 10 feet away from the noise source, the message became get back here. It was all computer generated. Later they explained the cloak and dagger game. The basic gist of the message was that the Secretary of Defense ordered these projects. All you can do is complain to your governor. Michael Dukakis maybe has a chance at running for president, but people who are familiar with the Kennedy assassination conspiracy and the mind control angle also know that Dukakis's run for presidency was interfered with using these directed energy mind control weapons. So the message is that it is even futile trying to change the government. At the time, I didn't understand the message to join the cosmology department completely. It is that this is all done by Star Wars technology, and a clue that stealth radar uses scalar waves which can only be resolved using a radio telescope. By rotating the sound source or by walking around the device, I would hear a different set of the four word messages depending on my head orientation to the sound source. The real message could only be heard by walking from left to right after one word was uttered. There were four segmented phase angles with a different set of words that would be played in each. But the real messages could only be deciphered if you followed the word train in order through each segmented phase angle. The real message was encoded in a few of the diagonals of each set of word trains. This was just a spy game and the messages are irrelevant. It was only a test. Now let's look at the science behind the trick. Close your eyes and listen to your environment. You can pinpoint the location and direction of all the sounds. How does your brain know where sound is coming from? Bats are exceptionally good at locating objects based on sound. We have a type of sonar built into our auditory cortex. Using just tonal quality and the difference of timing of the sound waves hitting each eardrum, our brain creates a model of what and where the sound source is. Modern surround sound systems use the science to create virtual speakers and the perception of being immersed into a movie from all directions. By analyzing the brain waves associated with hearing and integrated at the base of the brain, one can determine the perceived sound direction of the source. The bare auditory test using traditional EEG probes placed behind the ear can pick up these neural pathways. From signal analysis, the phase angle of the sound sources is determined and segmented into groups. The predominant sound source is easily identified and depending on which phase angle segmentation is classified, a different computer-generated voice message is modulated into the neuronal amplification, and thereby the perception of frequencies. This is the crux of the ventriloquism act played on so many people. It is pretty obvious how voice throwing can be used to get someone to check out a false noise or voice and leave their post. Place diagram here of sound waves hitting each ear at slightly different times. Show EEG pattern collected and integrated at base of brain with timings. How direction of sound is perceived through this phase difference and neuron timing. Illusions of mind. Into the second week of my torture, I was told that most projects are terminated with car crashes or heart attacks. Although the microwave hearing effect is debilitating and very distracting, I actually consider myself lucky to have been told all the experiments before they happened or explained how they were accomplished while they were performing them. Most projects are never told and left confused or dead. After surviving the constant remote heart attack attempts, I had to be vigilant of the psychic assassination attempts through car crashes. There are the bland methods for automobile assassinations such as hypnotizing the subject to run red lights, suddenly jerking their arms to steer off the road, putting them to sleep, or blinding their mind's eye to see an obstruction or approaching object, etc. But the more extreme and visually exciting method was discussed by Dr. Becker back in the early 1970s on the news. He said that this technology could be used to create visual perception errors to make airplane pilots crash, etc. JFK Jr.'s demise could have been caused in this way and assassinated like his father by the same shadow government. 
Princess Diana's demise could also have been caused by these weapons. Or maybe they were natural perceptional errors and misjudgments. In any case, I was shown how, during night driving, lights from oncoming cars, the road markers, or distant houses could be made to move around and appear in the foreground and in the background again. I was told this is accomplished by the psychic attacker synchronizing with the host's visual cortex strongly while they are in a dark room. They then shine a pinpoint flashlight and move it around in their own, the attacker's, eyes. What happens is the brain signals from the attacker are sent to the target and the target's visual cortex tries to make sense of the two competing signals, his own from the optic nerves and the attacker's. If you were able to see the secret message on the cover of this book, then you get a good sense how the brain will extract depth information from higher order patterns and can mismatch the data from each eye. You have taken the first step to being a psychic soldier. Silly isn't it? But effective. So I gave them some improvements on their techniques because according to my research they haven't changed their methods much in 30 years. I despise inefficiency, waste, lack of creativity, and slow progress. Clearly I don't have a future in government. I suggested that they use a slide or hologram instead of a pinpoint light on their side. The hologram or slide could be images such as angels or demons faces. I postulate that the target would see the subtle image in the light sources that his slash her brain integrates with the attackers. This would give the very spooky and eerie illusion that souls or ghosts were passing by on the road for each point source of light. The effect should be similar to that demonstrated in the movie Poltergeist. Maybe they already thought of this. They seemed excited about the possibilities to try it on their next project after I was dead. Stupid Alien Tricks On day three of my brain napping, the aliens demonstrated some hilarious visual manipulations. They could put pixelated shadow animations in my peripheral vision of a running man. They could create subtle shadow illusions of children in the road. While it could make someone swerve who is unfamiliar with the technology, it was fascinating and amusing to see it done. I believe a horror movie was just released that demonstrates the ghost children who make people crash their cars. There are no ghost, just shadow government testing of EEG heterodyning weapons. The visual cortex illusions seem to only work in dim lighting which is intuitively what you would expect. Less sensory stimuli and information there is the more easily external signals can influence the neurons. I interviewed psychic war test subjects that were fully convinced that they saw a wall open up into a war room with uniformed soldiers and other objects materialize. My visual cortex was never mapped that well, but you can see that fully conjured images as real as what is presented from your optic nerves can be induced in subjects. The technology seems to have gotten better since the 70s when people just saw shadowy ghost-like figures in these hauntings. The Ghost in the Machine Electronic warfare capabilities have become so refined that all electronic devices can be made to malfunction. The military-directed energy labs are perfecting ways to induce electromagnetic signals so precisely as to reprogram your computer or more easily influence your keyboard and mouse. If they can do it to a brain, they can do it with other electronics. Almost all targeted individuals report these kinds of tests of electronic control. I will save my amazing accounts for the movie of real footage in order for you to see and believe. These capabilities far exceed the older weapons of EMP and HERF that could stall your car or fry your data drives. The military gremlins are wreaking havoc in their electronic warfare exercises on the unsuspecting citizens. See the appendix for the Air Force Directed Energy Truly Futuristic Weapons Description. Perhaps EMP and HERF weapons could be tested on the ionospheric heaters and their computing facilities to see if a minor disruption would cure thousands of people of pain and mental illness worldwide. Another perspective. Abstractly, think about the Earth's magnetic field as a notion. If you move through it you will create an electromagnetic wake which can be detected since all charged particles have a resistance to motion when bathed in a magnetic pool except if moving along the lines of the field. There is an effect called electron cyclotroic current driving. It is usually only studied under extreme conditions in high energy physics laboratories. But it may be a possible mechanism of the current induced in the ionic channels of the euro. Microwaves and a magnetic field is all you need. Lens effect from ionosphere signal bouncing. 
the Earth's ionosphere is spherical. This allows a phased array beam to be bounced off the ionosphere and focused on a point on the Earth. The total internal reflection only occurs at a certain angle from the source. Imagine you are in a swimming pool underwater looking up. You see people standing above on the edge of the pool but when you look further away you see the surface of the water acting like a mirror and reflecting the interior of the pool. This is exactly how the Earth's atmosphere acts with vacuum outside in space or at the ionospheric layers. So now imagine that the pool that you are in is somehow curved into a spheroid. When you look out of the pool people will look smaller and the mirror portion will act like a telescope amplifying small points inside the pool depending on your angle of view. The reflection amplification is due to the curvature and the shrinking of the outside view is due to refraction effects. Do you get the picture yet? Satellites would have the reverse effect. The atmosphere would act like an amplifying lens at very high frequencies making the Earth act like it is under a microscope but this refraction effect is minimal at less than visible light spectrum. So these over-the-horizon radar systems, which are mostly used for viewing and tracking people, have their radar signals bounced off of the Earth's atmosphere in a doubt-like circle for the strongest energy areas due to the phenomena known as total internal reflection. The energy that does not hit the vacuum of space or different layers of the ionosphere at the angle of total internal reflection will have a much larger percent of its energy dissipated into space. Here's what it looks like. Now, more importantly in order to find a point on Earth where people might find sanctuary from the, the United States virtual hell, we only need to calculate the angles of total internal reflection based on the index of refraction for various radar wavelengths to see the range in which they are active. The, the United States and NATO allies have 15 or more giant antenna fields covering most of the world so intersection of all the active Areas shows us that it is almost a total and complete global surveillance system. Interesting to note though, is that the intersection of HARP, the Brazilian, and Puerto Rico's radar fields and a couple other active fields all intersect over the, the United States and then cover the rest of the hemisphere. Even South Wales ionospheric heat radar field can observe through the radar magnifying glass the United States citizens. However due to the ozone holes over the North and South Poles, the performance is different. This explains all the research interests from the duty into eruptionic conditions and cold plasma. Every time there is a wake or anomaly in the smooth surface of the ionosphere due to a hurricane or some other event, the lens is disrupted and victims in that part of the world find relief from the killing and torture signals. After the last two major hurricanes in the, the United States, I received reports from victims that they escaped the torture during the hurricane. They of course came to the conclusion that the hurricane must have knocked out the power stations which ran the directed energy weapon. They were unaware of the ionosphere lens effect. This shows a defense weakness both in the continental ballistic missile surveillance system and the psychotroic torture system, which are one and the same. Eastern Medicine There is a technique practiced called healing hands where practitioners move their hands without touching the patient all over the person's body who is experiencing discomfort and somehow it makes them feel better. There is a psychological component to this but since the ionospheric radar signals are so powerful many people around the world feel the effects even if they aren't directly targeted for torture. The static electricity fields created between the healer and the patient are moved and the body electrical resonances and electronic spin alignments are altered, the person feels better while the practitioner is doing it. Amazing how much human suffering these military surveillance systems are causing and have caused. Even the magnetic jewelry craze and negative ion generators that make people feel better can be linked to these radar signals and human surveillance techniques of bioelectric field modulation and reading. The cover story of ionospheric heating and observation of meteors is almost 99% bullshit in terms of the true purpose of these systems. More psychic phenomena explained. I, like most people, never understood the voodoo of quartz crystals that the New Age crowd was into. Some of the healing effects are of course due to the placebo effect and power of suggestion. But, so many people are affected by the scatter radar energy which has been around since 1960, that people have discovered things that make they feel better without knowing the exact underlying physics and biology. 
Negative ion generators are now standard in fans. Magnetic jewelry has become quite popular because of its lessening of pain effects. And quartz crystals work for some people. It turns out that quartz disrupts scatter radar fields due to the wavelengths at which they operate. So much pain and suffering throughout the world can be explained by the electromagnetic pollution of these stealthy scalar scatter radar systems tracking life forms. Silent assignations. Car crashes. The psychic soldier or CIA brain damaged warriors can place shadows of children in the road so that you will swerve to avoid hitting them. Luckily, I was aware of the technology while they were performing their tests. People that were more susceptible to the visual cortex stimulation could easily see holographic like images of children or people to avoid. If they were unaware of this military capability, they would swerve if they were good people. I found this to be absolutely amusing and astounding that they can create shadow-like figures, especially ones that haunt, running outside your peripheral vision. Useful if you want to get someone to follow the imaginary shadows, like lead a guard aware from his post. Stupid alien pranks. In the continuous onslaught of psychological abuse, the duty forward slash CIA evil aliens tried to get me to fall for another degrading trick. Proudly, I can say I had caught on to their abusive pranks quickly. They would tell me in order to stop the pain and torture all I had to do is ground my hands on the floor when I walked. They would project images of gorillas walking. The attempt at humiliation is self-evident. Humans and aliens this planet isn't big enough for the both us. It obvious who we can do without. Directed energy silent assassinations. All radar technology uses a mathematical technique to calculate M waveform effects called finite difference time domain in computational electrodynamics. This is important in calculating the properties of antenna design or near field effects from waveforms. Using the same technique, it is possible to calculate a waveform's time domain effects on different human bodies, heads, organs, and brains. By modeling a human body and head, one could calculate the resonant pattern in the human body, that is the standing wave formations and where the high and low energy absorption nodes would be. So a directed energy weapon could be made more effective by precision targeting of energy to specific organs for example. If you wanted to give a target diabetes, you could destroy some of the pancreas or alter the sugar metabolism in the cells. If you wanted to increase the chance of lung or brain cancer, the weapon merely needs to add energy to those locations and over time the probability will increase dramatically. Plausible Denial and Silent Assassination Techniques Airplane Crashes Programmed Assassins Heart Attack and Stroke Depression and Suicide Self-Destructive Behavior Amplification Poverty and Medical Treatment Accidents Dark Cloud Walking in front of car High voltage electricity Gas stove Drowning Cause other people to misjudge O doctor during an operation O taxi driver Like Princess Daya Notes Remote controlled heart attacks Runaway adrenal process. Falling downstairs and breaking a hip or neck. Hypothesic to walk in front of car. While driving, running red lights, putting to sleep at wheel, forced steering into cars, emotional triggers to the point of road rage. Distraction of voices equivalent to cell phone and drinking. Inability to take necessary medications properly. Messing up body sensing ability can kill a diabetic who takes insulin. Forced depression state, subliminals of suicide. Seizure signal. Other situations where poor judgment could be life-threatening. Obviously airplane pilots would be potentially deadly for many others. Disregard for the safety of other citizens who are not targeted for weapons testing. Children are being targeted and are far more easily influenced by voices. Told to play with parents' guns or sharp objects has been reported in several cases. Additionally signals are amplified. So smoking and drinking habits would eventually lead to an early death. 
While I haven't heard of any events like this, directed energy weapons could be used to ignite gas stations, that is why cell phone use is not allowed near a pump. Certainly they could be used to take out an airplane by sparking the fuel tank like what happened with Flight 800. Of course JFK Jr. supposedly got confused where the horizon was is a practiced psychic assassination. Creating mind-controlled assassins like the Uabama. Remote-controlled lobotomies. So how does the, the United States dispose of citizens or ex dod employees? Delgado stated that people who think outside some defined norm should be surgically mutilated. I assume he thinks he is normal. If remote control induced heart attack attempts fail and car crash attempts fail, the last resort is metasizatio. Also called zombificatio, schizotroic generators are now the preferred method since there is no blood and it is easily denied by the agencies and has been successfully kept in the science fiction belief realm of the general and purposefully ignorant populace. Euro amplification is easy if you have the Euro choice map of a particular mind. Amplifying every thought process like a thought echo would render a target dysfunctional or disconnecting them from their mind amplificatio would turn them senile. Sounds like President Reagan. This amplification can lead to paranoia, an amplification of distrust and fear, or simply amplify erroneous thinking manifesting itself as delusional thinking. Hypothermia Much of the psychic research and M weapons research talks about hypothermia out of the blue. It always had me baffled as to what the link was between hypothermia or hypothermia and psychic research. It was never made clear in either the Russian or the United States literature. Then I found the connection in the least likely place. It turns out that one of the first brain signals and directed energy effects way back in the 60s was that the most promising kill application of the weapon which was to cause hypothermia in a person. It is not an actual cooling down of the person by taking energy out of the system but a vasocostrictio from the nervous system like when one gets scared. There may be interference with the cell's metabolism too. This explains spooky haunted houses. People have reported that they felt a chill when a ghost was present. The apparitions or ghost images were simply early testing of e.g. heterodyning with projected mental images or visual perception errors into people's minds. The vasocostrictio increases their fear and makes them feel cold so that they shiver. This is another reason why some people shake with extreme fear such as observed in the famous cartoon series Scooby-Doo. I can see the crooks in the government now, saying Dagobit. We would have gotten away with it had it not been for you meddling saints, and your little dog too. Stupid alien tricks. If you don't kill your father in one hour we will kill you by triggering an exploding microchip we implanted in your sinus cavity, ears, and tooth, my handlers said. An hour came and went. I begin to feel a popping sensation in my nasal cavity, then in my ears, then in my mouth. The microchips are releasing a poison into your system right now. The sensations really felt like pop rocks candy in my nose, ear, and mouth. Later the aliens told me that all four of them were sticking their fingers in their nose and flicking them out to create a sudden pressure change. They did the same with the ears then the mouth. I suppose it would be scary for those people who read the disinformation on many websites about microchip implants or watched the movie Mission Impossible 2. That is not how the CIA tortures people. Only the belief of thinking they put in an exploding microchip works to control people into committing acts of murder through fear. I found cases where women killed their babies and such after talking to voices that told them to do it. Then they end up being imprisoned in an insane asylum or other. I know these the United States e.g. heterodyning Satanist methods well. They truly are sociopaths and need to practice on the United States citizens before doing it to an important target like an Iraqi or such. The CIA used to call their torturers, rough boys. Biotelemetric antenna implants are no longer needed to pinpoint the directed energy at the target. And brain chip implants are ancient military technology and no longer used on most targets. People often believe when the synthetic telepathy program begins that it is coming from their fillings or a tooth implant due to the literature and misinformation like from the movie, Real Genius. Everyone has heard about braces picking up radio stations. 
microwave hearing effect is even different than neural interfacing speech or ultrasonic heterodyning. Uses of EEG heterodyning by the DUDI Other than random experimentation, many individuals are targeted to be silenced or discredited. I know of a colonel who witnessed the army unloading bags of cocaine from a transport. He became a victim shortly after expressing concern. An FBI special agent for international terrorism became a victim after he testified that the FBI was perjuring itself at a trial. The former head of the LA FBI has become a target. Journalists who have written about these topics have been punished with the system. Anyone who has worked for the duty and then later leaves, may be subject to this covert type of assassination years later to silence potential security leaks. I have interviewed several families, where they had a relative who went crazy and got locked up in a sanitarium after that member started talking about that they were an assassin for the, the United States. The doctors always said, don't listen to what they say. They are delusional. This diabolical, systematic method of silencing potential leaks has been employed by the duty for many decades and usually carried out by the CIA known as the slime balls of the sub-intelligence community. I can't believe we have had so many presidents with the background of federally sponsored crime. Everybody who knows what the government is doing is under a great deal of scrutiny and threat of reprisals. So I especially commend the MIT professors and students involved in dispelling the myth that aluminum bean is block EEG heterodyning. They used a $250,000 network analyzer to view the resonance signatures emitted by the human body to determine that the hats actually act like antennas for those frequencies rather than a shield. Like the terrorists have done in the past, the CIA is notorious for doing. That is making money off of stock market prediction of major events and creating front companies to fund their more odious undertakings so as not to be as easily dissuaded by threats of budgetary cuts by Congress. Psychotroic Hostages The United States secret e.g. heterodyned, psychotroic, mind control prisons hold many people hostage in this country and around the world, some politically motivated while others appear to be random experimentation. Shocking as this may be, you must remember we are a hypocrisy not a democracy. We use the most anti-democratic methods to intimidate, overthrow, and control other countries. The army was recently ousted for putting false articles and news reports in Iraqi information streams for example. From my research, there is more information warfare directed at the citizens of the United States than abroad. After being awoken from the American dream into the ugly reality of brutality, lies, and mind control so overtly and routinely practiced, I can't watch the news on television without feeling nauseous. I take tens of calls a day and answer countless emails from victims being brutalized by these weapons daily, then I see a report of a cat stuck in the tree which a fireman had to rescue. The absurdity of what is considered important enough to report on the mass media terrifies those who know what's really going on. When did we lose control of the free press? How are politicians kept in the dark of this military coup? Why can't they pass simple updated laws to at least openly protect citizens from the psychotroic massacre? Another method of covering up top secret technology and its abuses, I found while digging through the archives of DARPA, CIA, and DUDI funded research, technologies that I worked on decades ago are still being funded today to look as though no progress has been made. Why hasn't the weapon been more widely used for war? It doesn't have the success rate needed to be reliably used for war in place of ground troops. It probably is being used as a supplement. According to European Parliament documents it was used in Desert Storm to fatigue and demoralize troops. Also, if it were successfully used in war once, countries would invest more into it psychotroic defenses. So it is considered more valuable as a political dissident silencing, spying, espionage, and silent assassination tool. I don't believe brain waves can be read by satellites. How can you prove this? It can be done by over-the-horizon radar bouncing their signals off the ionosphere as well as by satellites. HARP and the Puerto Rico ionospheric heaters are examples of these ground-based high-powered phased arrays. Satellites could make it a truly global system.
a couple simple mathematical calculations can demonstrate it. First, take the resolution of the Hubble Space Telescope or large radio Earth-based telescopes and calculate the sensitivity. Secondly, you must consider active scanning techniques which increase the signal-to-noise ratio tremendously, such as electron spin resonance and scatter stealth radar techniques. Thirdly, compare the sensitivity of SQIDs, superconducting quantum interference devices, with an electrically resonating biotelemetric antenna with modulated body electricity in it viewed from a low Earth orbit of 1,000 miles. It is within many orders of magnitude capable of detecting the signal especially if the exact location were known. However that is not what they are doing. They are using high-powered nearly perfectly destructive interfering M waves which reflect or scatter with intense power levels back to their sources without burning the area of interest and without losing much of the signal-to-noise ratio from the absorption, scatter, transmittance, and reflectance energies. Lastly, look at the military research and patent files to find many published articles about reading heart and respiratory signals at a large distance. NASA even offered to build brain printing technology for airport security. The void of research at reading brain waves without EEG probes should tell you something. Do an internet search on mind control. Explain the amount of disinformation, misinformation, and general discussion around this topic if it can't be done. Explain why a very successful microwave antenna military subcontractor has a patent from the 19 Sovietis that claim brain reading and control. Explain why documents released through the Freedom of Information Act by the CIA, openly discusses research on a project called RIC, Remote Hypnotic Intercerebral Control, using the same techniques. Clearly, this is such an important scientific discovery for weapons, spying and espionage that much neurological data and research has been buried under the guise of national security bullshit. Even if you could read brain signals, how can you influence the nervous system? The reverse process is true. Have you ever tried a tens or muscle stimulator that contracts your muscles by pulsating a 70V small amperage current through the area? The brain works on ionic electric currents too. Have you noticed that your cell phone sometimes causes audio experiment nearby to chirp right before you get a phone call? Microwave directed energy weapons are being developed to knock out and fry any electrical component not properly shielded. EMP, electromagnetic pulse, weapons can stall car engines, stop or cause bombs to detonate, and cause brain currents to misfire. Absorption of M energy at specific resonance frequencies have been shown to cause urotransmitter release in neurons when absorbed by the brain. Even low-intensity magnetic fields have been shown to create currents in the brain or alter brain activity. The bioelectric and electromagnetic biochemistry mechanisms are too numerous to list. Okay, so the physics is sound. One could read and influence brain waves perhaps by terrestrial antennas or satellites. But how can you heterodyne different brain waves? Everybody is different. Everybody is a little different, a normal distribution around some average model. Deciphering a person's brain waves and mapping them to subjective experience is what has already been done. Because this idea is so disconcerting to many people, it might be considered dangerous knowledge for a population which would start questioning their religious, philosophical, and moral beliefs. Nobody wants their soul to be reduced to an electrical signal. The army published some documents showing how they mapped out the sensory pathways as an example. A project which I believe is to mislead the public on the current state of technology is called the Human Cogome Project which has similar goals to the Human Geomi Project. Very briefly, there is software that auto-correlates the brain patterns of individuals in a system called to my thought and memory interface. That's incredible. But why would a government torture their own citizens? The United States has a long ugly history of doing this. There are massive cover-ups and barely a mention in the news when the programs are discovered. The same weapons testing programs continue, often under new funding and a different name. There is almost no oversight for top-secret programs. Virtual human dissections of random citizens has been occurring since the inception of the CIA and definitely just after World War II and Project Paperclip where many Nazi scientists were excused for their war crimes and sheltered by the duty. 
How can we fix our broken government and stop those dishonorable men and women who are abusing the public trusts and funds? The most difficult hurdle for us is the seemingly apathetic, self-centered, near-sighted mentality of the general public. Getting people to care what is happening to their future and country is difficult when you don't have control of the main media outlets. Grassroots effort at educating the public until a critical mass of awareness is reached will be the only way to pressure lasting changes and protections. There have been many violent acts misdirected to the wrong branches of government by these mind control torture victims but they are written off in the news as random acts of madmen and extremists. Publicly shaming the perpetrators and culprits will set a precedence. Trying to recruit the help of other countries to pressure the United States to free its psychotropic hostages would help. Get academic intuitions and other governments to discuss their psychotropic research openly. The United States is the only major country not to sign international treaties to ban the use of these weapons, clearly because they enjoy torturing their own population too much. Even Russia tried to get these weapons banned at a UN conference and the United States refused. I can't believe such important scientific discoveries are hoarded by the killing machine. Didn't they weigh the benefits of all the lives this technology would save against the potential use for killing many more? Apparently, defense is not about saving lives, it's about killing other people more efficiently. They don't get metals or more power by saving American lives through technological discoveries, they get more power by instigating wars and killing effectively. They are selfish, suboptimal decision makers. Clearly there is a problem with intellectual meritocracy in the culturally evolved military upper ranks since they were raised with good old-fashioned fascism. What makes it so difficult to get the attention of the world on such an immediately important issue? Good question. The media refuses to cover it, either because they have been instructed to or they have succumbed to the decades of brainwashing which states that if anyone claims that they have symptoms of psychotropic weapons that they are crazy. It is too controversial a topic and they are afraid of military reprisals may be the other reason. The psychological programming of the populace is extensive. At last count, I found over 100 movies and TV shows that make fictional references to mind reading and influencing technology. It has become common sense fiction in most people's minds. Also, we tend to trust and believe Washington DC spokespeople, but know they lie all the time. Portagos has come out saying that they don't torture people. I know this to be a lie, yet he sounds so sincere when he is quoted in the papers or on TV. Like quantum theory and relativity, the physics is just not intuitive, so it is easy to believe that time is constant, the earth is flat, and mind reading radar is impossible. Stupid alien tricks. I acquired two new abilities with the government neural link experiments conducted on me for the entire spooky year, October the 31st, 2004 October the 31st, 2005. I became a human compass. By minimizing the pain I felt through aligning my arms stretched out with the Earth's magnetic lines of force, I would always point in a north forward slash south direction. I carried a compass with me everywhere, and liked to demonstrate my stupid alien trick to anyone with whom I felt like striking up a conversation. The other capability I acquired was the ability to tell time down to the minute without a watch. It was a game that I played with the operators to whom I was e.g. heterodyned. They would accurately tell me the time whenever I asked. This really impressed a couple people. They had no idea how I could point to north forward slash south after being spun around with my eyes closed or tell the precise time whenever they wanted. A couple people bought me a beer for the bar tricks. I never told them how it was done for obvious reasons. Since the physical torture stopped, I haven't been able to perform either trick again. But. The human compass capability does point out a potential weakness in the weapons system. If they are using linearly polarized electromagnetic waves for the scalar radar energy or ESR, MRI magnetic fields, the target object may disappear or the neural link signal weaken when aligned with the Earth's magnetic or the scalar radar electromagnetic fields. Silencing security leaks, whistleblowers, political activists, and hindering scientific discovery. Psychotroics is a very covert way to take out perceived problems for particular interests in the government.
rather than openly assassinate people or harbor political prisoners as in other communist countries, that the United States prefers this slyer method. Just as with torture without physical evidence, termed soft torture, it quietly and effectively does the trick. Coal miners used as slaves were hobbled by breaking of their ankles to keep them from running away and demonstrated in the movie, Misery. Brain hobbling through psychotroics is done today in an analogous fashion. By using psychotroic generators to inject minute random currents into the targeted brain, a threat will exhibit schizophrenic thinking and can be thrown into a mental hospital where further silencing can occur without their consent. Neural scientists are closely watched and any who get too close to rediscovering the government's mind control technology can be mentally hobbled to prevent further discovery. Without visible political prisons and torture scars, the public will remain discredulous that it is being done. It is all about plausible denial. We surely are more civilized than the media Vulcans with their large torture chambers. Everything is just invisible now, but the same brutal, unevolved people run them. Plead to the reader. Once again, I need to reiterate my credibility since the programming of the masses has taken place over so many years with such great influence. I have everything to lose by divulging these secrets of the government. I was earning $140,000 average pay in Silicon Valley before I morally felt obligated to disrupt their lies through my public voice by taking two years off and writing this book. Truth is not so terrible once you accept it. Only with truth can we triangulate on a better future and hold those erroneous thinkers accountable for their beyond top secret decisions that we, their employers, need to responsibly make in order to further efficiency progress, and change in the duty and in politics that have allowed for the random selection of humans for their trite experiments for over 30 plus years. They will take our money on a boondoggle to employ endless projects that they declare for national security, killing millions by their withholding of technology and secrets. Power is addictive when you have no true value. I will use harsh words here to once more plead to the American public to investigate this issue independent of the corrupt chain of command. There is nothing that I despise more than corruption. The CIA's motto is yea, shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Crock of shit. They are tasked with suppressing truth. And Porter Goss who is an alumni from my private school was supposed to bring justice, freedom, and truth to the American people but instead he has fallen prey to the business-as-usual foul element of criminals that make up the house of ill deceit. The CIA needs to be disbanded of its criminal elements. What have they done for us? They knew about 9 11 but decided not to prevent it. They have tortured and killed more Americans in their declassified top-secret programs than any terrorist group in history. But we chose to ignore it. We prefer delusion over truth. It is simply more pleasing for most people to believe their government is not corrupt and we are morally justified in policing, not occupying, 135 nations on earth where we have troops stationed. There are only 55 nations that we haven't taken over. This is the wake-up call. If you chose to ignore it, history will not be your savior. You were told and you chose not to voice or act in the best interest of your fellow humans. You will be on the wrong side of history. George Bush is a puppet leader or a criminal. Those are the only two choices. Type miserable failure into Google to get his biography. The disinformers found they cannot control the internet for leaks but they can flood it with disinformation. So you need to dig deep and remember the formula that I described for their disinformation tactics. Think what the United States has done through global tyranny with satellite and over-the-horizon radar-based neurological weapons. There is no sanctuary on earth that one can just say, I give up, I will leave and be done with you. You will be tortured till the end of the earth by whichever corrupt general, colonel, or CIA director decides your fate. Are you scared yet? You are just beginning to understand the situation the people of earth are faced with. Cope with the ugliness of the truth for which we work and maybe we can fix it if it isn't too late. Or maybe you will decide that you don't care about truth, reality, as long as you can be lead to believe that your small universe and fragile house of cards belief system is enough to keep you happy. You should stop reading this book now in that case. 
I am a habitual truth-teller, insensitive and direct. My do de torturers said to me at the beginning of my year-long journey into hell, you know too much. We must kill you. You get the benefit of my life learnings of knowing too much without the threat of death. Well worth your twenty dollars bucks or so to buy this book wouldn't you say? The madness of this world has lulled the masses into a slumber. Wake up. An eye is upon you. An eye ready to blink. So, face forward with arms wide open and minds reeling. Your future has arrived. Unknown author. Welcome to M. Cultura. would you like to be fried with that? The making of assassins M. Cultura style. During the severe torture and psychic directed energy assignation attempts, the victim is encouraged to commit acts of violence against anybody the attackers can make the victim believe is doing it to them, usually neighbors, ex-lovers, or ex-bosses. The directed energy weapons test victim will easily be discredited as a violent loony in the news. The police and FBI will not ask any further questions about the incident either because of trained ignorance or orders. If the victim survives this phase which can last several months or years, a hypnotic pulsing is used to subdue the victims so that they don't seek revenge on military installations or the CIA for trying to kill them and for torturing them. An apathy signal and permanent hypnotism is used to keep the victim subdued until their death in a soulless, mind-controlled emptiness trapped in a secret prison camp in their own brain. Have I congratulated you yet for living in the land of freedom? How to defuse Mashuria candidates, walking time bombs, and CIA-programmed assassins. There are only a handful of scripts and methods the CIA shadow sub agency use when practicing their trade and developing their methods. All the scripts rely on creating incredible anger through endless torture, frustration because no one will believe them or help them, and then redirecting the anger to a person, usually a neighbor, local authorities, FBI, president political party, an ex-boss, or ex-lover, or some variation. Redirecting the anger and frustration while pushing them to the brink of violence is the strategy in creating a mind-controlled assassin or Mashuria candidate. There are only a couple variations using obsession and love as the delusional driving method to motivate an assassin. Two well-known love-driven assassins were John Lennon's and President Reagan's shooters. I have only met one colonel from the Air Force that had the delusional love affair mind control experiment done on him. It appears that there was no follow-up yet to direct him to kill a specific target except maybe the famous singer who he was mind controlled into believing suddenly left him. He recognizes it now as a delusion so powerful that he divorced his real wife. He was flying top secret planes at the time it began. So I am sharing some very basic methods with other nations and this one for whomever will listen how to defuse these Mgultra e.g. heterodyned programmed assassins. Neural programming, psychic driving, depatterig, torture, Skinner behaviorism, neural linguistic programming, hypnosis and many other techniques are used on these many government projects as they are called, or CIA forward slash do deep psychotroic slaves. In order for there not to be an easy association between the violent outbreak and mind control experimentation, almost all projects must be classified as mentally ill first before triggering them. The news or ignorant local authorities will report a mentally ill person went wacko, for no reason. That way the subject will be arrested and dispose of once the assassination has been completed by local authorities. Taken from CIA documents, see Appendix. That document amongst hundreds of thousands of others in the last year have been reclassified by the CIA as secret and taken out of the Library of Congress. I am republishing some of these documents in the appendix. It is truly sickening how this has all been covered up and will never make it into public school history books to warn the next generation to be more vigilant, maintain the standards of the Constitution by selflessly putting time into political activism and educating themselves on the issues. Just watching the hypotube will do nothing but program you with paid advertisements and government-sanctioned information. The tortured victims are often stalked, neurons amplified with electromagnetics, and often they have been drugged with long-term hallucinogens which make them paranoid or from their perspective, sensibly sensitive one, these artichoke assassins or domestic terrorists in the making simply need non-government tortured people to acknowledge that it may be happening to them which will diminish their frustration level. 2. 
they want to be believed, and to know that you will keep a watch out for unusual activity. 3. You will do a little research to see if there is precedence for what they are going through. If you suspect your neighbor to be one of these victims, I thoroughly recommend that you take these steps to defuse the situation. The perpetrators or operators of these mind control assassination experiments almost always use the neighbors to gaslight the increasing paranoia. Some neighbors may be undercover spooks and decoys while most are innocent. The torture which feels like you are being microwaved is timed with neighbors coming home from work and often doing home repairs with construction-like equipment. Voices are thrown from the neighbors' apartments using the ventriloquism methods I described elsewhere in this book. You won't believe how many victims are 100% convinced their neighbors or cars parked outside their homes contain this very sophisticated weapon and is being used locally. They file lawsuits against their neighbors or worse. It is all about the timing of the torture and voices. Naturally, over time the victim will see a complete correlation of neighbor movements and noise correlated with their pain and suffering. With each reported case to the local authorities, more desertities they become to it and more enforced is their policy to call these victims crazy. You can be a little hard on the local authorities for being uneducated in physics and history but you can't blame them given their limited mental abilities for not being able to solve these kind of cases with such limited resources and access to federal level information. Plus, it is not their role to act as a sort of federal level internal affairs looking for high treason in the military and executive branches. They simple don't have the authority to investigate at this level. In fact, the reason that the three-prong government failed is because our founding fathers couldn't foresee the sophistication of the corruption and technology that would facilitate it. If they had foreseen it, they would have created a fourth branch of government whose sole existence was to act as internal affairs police to the other three with unlimited security clearance, their own military, and reports directly to the public. Shame game try to make victim believe they brought it on themselves. Extreme brutality One method to make victims' testimonies unbelievable is to make the torture and experimentation so extreme in intensity, carelessness, and duration as to make anyone who speaks of it sound delusional. There is no way the American government would allow torture and practice assassinations on random citizens. They would be caught at some point and exposed, is the general thought process of the average American who doesn't know CIA forward slash Dodd's history. The psychology of them ultra mind control programs. Isolation and sensory deprivation. Breaking down the self. Reprogramming. Dream manipulation. Our revels now are ended. These our actors. As I foretold you, were all spirits, spooks, and. Are melted into air, into thin air. And, like the baseless fabric of this vision. The cloud capped towers. The gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself, yea, all which it inherit, shall dissolve, and, like this insubstantial pageant faded, leave not a rack behind. We are such stuff, as dreams are made on, and our little life, is rounded with a sleep. Shakespeare, The Tempest, 4. 1. E.E.G. Heterodyned inspired Hollywood movies. These weapons tests by treasonous power addicts in the conspiracy on people for the last 30 years have inspired many movies besides The Matrix. I have seen many movies where television white noise communicates voices or images. Poltergeist and White Noise are movies which describe the effects of Starkley's patent on voice transmission directly to the audio cortex. It is simply an amplification of the perceived sounds in the frequencies of the audio transmission. So white noise would be ideal for stimulating the neural frequency circuits that a voice transmission via induced amplification would need. It would be perceived by the target as the voice coming from the sound source. A similar effect for visual imagery in white noise can be achieved with stimulating the visual cortex. More artichoke and mgultra with better cover up. The CIA's programs and the TSS division who develops their drugs and technologies have not changed since the 1950s except the remote hypnotic intercerebral control, subsumed under Tamai, has improved dramatically. It also appears that they may be rerunning all the Mgultra and Artichoke remote assassination exercises.
I found documents from the CIA in the book Secret Weapons that exactly described everything I was put through step by step. Nothing differed. But I still wonder how many drugs were used on me or if they are rerunning their experiments on a massive scale to see if all the same effects from the drugs or tricks they use, can be induced through pure electromagnetics. The item that most disturbs me in the released documents is that they say a test subject after committing an act of violence will be arrested by the involved agencies or government and thereby disposed of. I know of many cases the FBI did not solve correctly and these practice assassinations landed these mind control victims in prison for life or they got the death sentence. Discredited and disposed of permanently. Who is the greater threat, the CIA or the Russians? The CIA has killed and damaged our way of life far greater than any Russian attempt. Proud to be American, aren't you? These programmed assignations get written off in the news as some crazy went on a killing spree. Most Americans, politicians, and FBI are ignorant that these unethical, immoral, and repetitive experiments in ever-growing numbers continue to this day nearly unchanged since the 1950s. An interesting note about the movie The Matrix is that Neo, played by Keo Reeves, lived in room 101. Room 101 was where people were taken to be reprogrammed and tortured by their worst fears by the Big Brother Society of George Orwell's 1984. You suffer in your own private purgatory, a personalized hell. Sound familiar? Cataloging of Mind Variations The cataloging of brain wave variations and testing of EEG cloning forward slash heterodyning have been going on for a long time. With each brain variance analyzed and cataloged in the database, the mind control weapon becoming more effective on a larger part of the population and more difficult to stop. It appears to many, that they are mopping up the outliers now. Assimilations into the brain profile database has picked up pace since 1996. Brain Signal Classification and Experimentation Imagine that you were abducted and now an experimental human animal property of the CIA forward slash duty. They place you on a table strapped down with your skull cut open and your brain exposed. They probe around with an electric probe to see what memories and functions they can stimulate. This goes on for months or years. You now have a sense what they are doing to thousands of people wirelessly. Is this allegation not important enough to sponsor an independent investigation? to commit a small amount of scientific expertise and monetary resources to nullify the population's fears that it could be true. Not a dime or person will be allocated to this. Are you frightened that America is not what it used to be, yet? Hypnosis as a weapon There have been endless programs discovered by the Freedom of Information Act that show how the CIA is developing hypnosis as a weapon. RIC, Remote Hypnosis Intracerebral Control, is a continued program and part of the Weapons Effects Program. Hypnosis is mainly thought of as a way to cure bad habits or uncover repressed memories. It can be used very powerfully in reverse to repress memories, create false memories, and program assassins or self-destructive behavior. Classic Methods of Mind Manipulation Ego Psychophotry is the manipulation method. The need to be valued is what we all have. The biggest obstacle to objective thinking is ego. It can be a driver to better ourselves, but the ego needs to be fed. It is a type of addiction. The larger part of one's drivers it becomes, more protection measures are created. It can be a source of great pleasure or great pain. It opens one up to being manipulated. Hope delusions one will always prefer the pleasurable belief between two seemingly equally valid models of reality. Hope gives us meaning and direction. Most people hold many irrational beliefs because they feel good. It begins in childhood with beliefs in Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy, and continues in more complex forms into adulthood. Fear-driven versus pleasure-driven people there is an overall classification that people can be divided into those whose behaviors tend to revolve around worry, fear, and focus on avoidance of the fearful events. Then there are those that are bold, fearless, and whose behaviors tend to be seeking pleasures and adventures often appearing reckless in nature to the former types. Value creating the perception of value. Scarcity, desirability by others. We tend to value objects or even significant others at an extreme 
by how desirable they are to others. Diamonds are a good example of this effect. A somewhat rare carbon formation that has very few practical applications, but because others value it, we do too. If suddenly everyone decided it was just a rock, the value of diamonds would fall to near zero instantly. Maslow's hierarchy of needs is another psychological model of motivators which includes some of the more primitive base drivers. Advertising and sales use all the above psychological control mechanisms to manipulate people's desires. This is an accepted form of mind control because one should be able to resist undue persuasion at one's own detriment through rational thinking. The same techniques are utilized for political campaigning. Carefully constructed images of ideal leaders are plotted. Acting has proven to be the most important skill in our leaders ironically since we have very little true knowledge of their competency or core values. The Mind Probe Using a modified brain printing technique, EEG cloning can capture the moment of a guilty response feeling and continuously replay those brain signals to try and stimulate the memories surrounding the associated response. This is often more useful than the original brain printing method of simply identifying the guilty emotional response in order to infer truth. That system can be given false positives by pressing on the sternum by either of the EEG heterodyne participants because the feature set for classification must include a similar sensory signal. So the mind probe can be used in reverse to defeat polygraph and brain printing truth technologies used in the justice system and in top secret clearance background checks in this country or abroad. Famous people targeted. Generally, they stay away from overt perceived auditory harassment of famous people but do not shy away from using the less obvious effects. It has been told to me from several sources that Michael Dukakis was targeted during his campaign for presidency. Also, the Russian chess master who played IBM's Big Blue Computer complained about microwave confusion rays being directed at him. His society, Russia, is much more open about the discussion of neurological weapons. It is not a far stretch to see if political manipulation is being used by CIA forward slash duty who might have had an interest in assassinating JFK using a traditional mind-controlled patsy. The high office of president has been used to foment a plot to destroy Americans' freedom and before I leave office I must inform the citizen of his plight. John F. Kennedy at Columbia University, 10 days before his assassination. The crimes by the CIA and Duty have been difficult to prove without any government help in equipment procurement and scientific expertise. There are thousands of people willing to testify. However many of the victims have been successfully confused by the scripts and testing, and many others have been discredited by horrific tactics. There are still many like myself that have remained untouched by their attempts. Now you need a weapon and a motive for a case. The weapon is top secret and cleverly marketed as the Continental Missile and Over the Horizon Radar Defense System. It is difficult to turn them off to prove where the signal is coming from and submit the giant miles-wide phased array antenna and participating satellites as evidence in court. The motive is complex since it operates at many levels. This complexity in both the science of the weapon and the diabolical motives are beyond the average person's intelligence and attention span to understand. In summary, the motive is human effects weapons testing and development for neurological weapons, but it goes much deeper than that. Even though torture and psychic assassinations are awful uses, the most disturbing to me and to democracy is that it is being used as a political manipulation tool in our own country and others. So even if you have the perpetrators, the weapon, and the motive, you would still need to find lawyers that wouldn't fear shadow government reprisals. On top of that, EEG heterodyning would be used to influence the judges and jury unless appropriate shielding and detection equipment were in place. It is difficult to see justice anytime soon. Psychology of Torture Torture is a tool used to achieve several goals during depatterig, programming, and interrogations. Especially with the group in the duty that is experimenting with Mashuria creation. How do you create attack dogs or vicious animals? You mistreat them. Bigotry, chauvinism, and homophobia is alive and well in the unevolved ranks of government. My cyber hive mind group of torturers were composed of a woman, an Indian, a black man, and a gay white man according to them. 
These are the groups they were trying to direct my anger at and associate the torture. I've heard similar stories from the many interviews I have conducted. Their scripts also try to point the finger at China, Arabs, and Russia as the culprits of psychotropic torture and tyranny. When it becomes obvious which country is behind it, based on the literature and technology capabilities, they try to point the finger at the FBI, thereby possibly provoking an attack on them like in the Oklahoma bomber case. Clearly missing is the finger pointing to the CIA who has continuously operated and funded these attacks on Americans and people worldwide in their quest for total mind control. This is fact if you care to educate yourself on the released federal documents. How will these experiments on creating bitter, angry dissidents be used? They can turn other countries' citizens against their own government. The technique all hangs on making the torture victim believe that a particular group did it to them. So stage a kidnapping, torture the victim with accents from the Patsy organization, set up a chance meeting with a CIA agent and they will be happy to help destroy those that the victim believes to be behind it. Creating spies and espionage agents out of people of their own kind is the goal of many of the CIA mind control technologies. Their experiments are reckless and careless as to the lives of the practice victims and society at large. They often try to make the victim believe that their neighbors, family, or ex-lover is behind their mental anguish somehow connected to the conspiracy of field agents that execute these programs. One man I interviewed was convinced that President Clinton was behind his psychotropic torture because they used voice transformation technology to project Clinton's voice utilizing the electronic warfare unit's capability of overpowering radio transmissions and faked a broadcast specifically to him. People who are unaware of these techniques used in warfare will be left confused and feeling insane, which is the ultimate goal of covering up the human mind control experimentation program. The CIA sold crack in LA neighborhoods drug driving. Another reason I surmise that the crack sales to LA black neighborhoods were not just for raising money for the Contra rebels like the papers have reported is because three people I interviewed who had a drug history said that the behavior modification mind control program started out by a technique called drug driving. They described themselves as recreational drug users, and said that when the targeting began, they were given pain stimuli for certain drugs and suggestion to do other drugs with an induced spiral of depression and stress. This led them to cocaine or methamphetamine abuse they claim. This is what would be needed to improve amplification of the voice recognition neural pathways identified by dopamine saturation which facilitates the CIA synthetic telepathy to be used at low power intensities. It could also have the dual purpose of discrediting the human experiment. More stupid alien tricks. Here's a funny experiment conducted on me. My e.g. brain partner bit into a lemon. The sour reflex cloned to me and they were able to capture the reflex to replay continuously. They always told me in advance what they were testing. I was left lecturing to my class with a lisp for 15 minutes. My voice changed and I sounded ridiculous. My students commented on it. If any of my former students are reading this book, they will remember that day. I chewed some gum to disrupt the signal. How embarrassing. You can image how useful this trick would be to use on a political candidate. Sacrifices and cannibals. While we are in this barbaric land of deception, I thought that I would point out an interesting but soon to be extinct species. Stephen Gould taught me about catastrophic evolution and species that have produced cannibalistic mutations. If the cannibal gene is not removed from the genetic pool, the species becomes a leaf on the evolutionary tree. In human history, we have evolved this gene several times but have been able to contain it. Phylogically survival occurs because the dominant social structure recognizes the detrimental behavior and alters its mating probabilities or kills off the unsociable elements. Now, unlike other times in the history of life, a cannibalistic tribe has again emerged partially genetically influenced and partially culturally or memically altered. The shadow government and their duty forward slash CIA weapons developers have evolved this detrimental mutation. They have been sacrificing and cannibalizing thousands of peaceful people in our civilization at random for many decades now. My research shows that it is growing in numbers as their budgets increase. The mentality is proliferating out of control. 
the militant minds have found a new way to replicate their sociopathic thinking and behavior. It must be stopped. But most unique to this cannibal strain, is that they have found a way to mimic the rest of society by thoroughly studying relationships, speech, and personality profiles and hiding behind their application of the psychology of persuasion. This makes it extremely difficult for the trusting population to see what they are without enormous amounts of research and time to validate their statements and evaluate their actions independent of mass media programming. Stupid Alien Tricks Enough of my shamings for a moment. Let's relax to another stupid evil alien trick. So when my e.g. heterodyne hoaxers tried to panic me by trying to convince me that they could give me a heart attack, they would press on the right side of their chest which I would feel as internal pain and say, we are burning your heart. We are giving you a heart attack with directed focused energy to your heart. My reply to them, the heart is on the left side of the chest, Gultra Moran. But that's good enough for government work. It happened several times. These evil aliens aren't the brightest bulbs in the bunch. That is probably why they crash landed on Area 51. And this is why they practice on citizens. It fooled Saddam Hussein. Those CIA agents must have been pros and pressed on the left side. Good for them. This summons the image from the movie The Matrix where Neo restarts Trinity's heart in The Matrix after a virtual bullet shot by the agent stops it. Truth and Guilt Truth is the summation of all self-consistent perspectives. It is what our model of reality should asymptotically approach but can never reach. The practice that psychic soldiers and Mgultra survivors undergo is to defeat guilt-determining devices. I spent a week while under Gultra mind control experiments learning how to defeat brain printing and traditional polygraph techniques and the attackers practiced inducing false positives on these devices while I spoke. These tools are clearly useless with e.g. heterodyning technologies and remote hypnosis. Spooks, goons, zombies, and the pentagram. The Halloween theme and the satanic cult cover story never ended with my mind manipulation data collectors. They even pointed out that the United States flag is satanic and has an unlucky 13 prison stripes representing imprisonment of the 50 pentagrams on it. I suppose they were trying to break down my patriotism. However the damage is done and now I would now like to see the flag updated to something more cheerful. Here is the flag forced into my mind's eye. Genetic and cultural memory. Our DNA has a memory. If you model DNA as a biochemical computer, you can understand how memory is created in the evolutionary machine. Let's ask why do birds or sheep flock? At some point there must have been a survival advantage since the sole purpose of the genetic program is survival. Certainly flocking together makes it easier for a wolf to find a bountiful food source. It seems that due to limited food supply that flocking might even be a disadvantage. However, Sexual reproduction is far more important for continuance than the disadvantages of grouping. This socializing gene which gives rise to the subjective experience of needing companionship is also the memory of the genetic strain to which this behavior was advantageous. Our primitive drives are composed of genetic memories and programs. The Nazi study of evolution through this model was called eugenics or directed evolution, implemented through genocide. Culturally, a similar phenomena can be observed. Culture, group behavior that is not genetically directed, evolves through memes and has memory that is stored within people's mind and passed on through storytelling or chimpanzee-like mimicry of learned cultural norms. The CIA is also conducting genocide of memes and belief systems or euphoist as directed cultural evolution. Suffering and Mind Control there have been many books which study the Mgultra torture techniques and mind control so I won't detail it here. But it is interesting to note that these techniques of mind control have existed long before the CIA. Suffering has been linked primitively to a creation of loyalty and comradeship. From medical doctors that suffering the rite of passage of intense schooling, to boot camp and unnecessary military hardships to religions that suffer on a day of denial or more severe tortures like with Christianity in the days of old with beating the demos out or self-mutilation to suffer like Jesus did in vain.
All these kinds of events cause a sense of belonging because of the pain and a sense of comradeship between all those that went through the same experience. Even a cultish, fun event like Burning Man that takes place in the harsh conditions of a desert each year, creates a sense of suffering together for a greater cause. This mentality may give rise to the Stockholm Syndrome of hostages becoming sympathetic for their captors' cause. I was probably not mind-controlled into CIA slavery from the torture because I despise anything that causes me pain. That's probably why I'm not married to Moral Cataclysms One foreseeable worry that the CIA forward slash do has is repeating what happened to Rome with its moral cataclysm and Christianity. However the new religion is science. How will knowledge of the Shietificatio of the human soul be accepted by the general religious masses? One such experiment I believe to see if science and religion can mix to form a new set of moral teachings and beliefs is Scientology. I believe that this is very much a CIA-funded experiment. For my next book, I plan to infiltrate this perceived cult to find out more about its teachings and how they are so intertwined in the literature of CIA mind control experimentation. The CIA expert with whom I consult told me that L. Ron Hubbard got his PhD thesis on creating cults. Just